The views and opinions of any of the guests of After Hours AM are not necessarily the views and opinions of After Hours AM, its hosts, its staff, or any of its affiliates. Welcome to the After Hours program. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. This is the latest disclosure to report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. Wait a minute, something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. Welcome to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what skills. We are live over here at Paracon 2017. And it is now time, Greg, for guess what? Their what? ghost stories. Our ghost stories, their ghost stories, everybody's ghost stories. If you got a ghost story and you want to win a prize. See, yep. now there's prizes involved here. Yes, there are. Step up, tell your story. Who do so, we have in the chair right so, now? We're so, gonna go ahead, give her the microphone. Tell us who you are. Hi, my name's Dawn. Uh, actually, my last name's Kaju, and I have lineage to the actual reservation. Oh, very cool. So that's even cooler. That is very cool. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, this segment is your ghost story, and really everyone's ghost story. And, and it sounds like you have a few different ones. Yes, I definitely do. Please share them with us. Share any of, the, any of them and all of them, if you'd like, with us. Okay, well, the, the two most predominant ones that people really like to hear about um, was, was my, my grandmother's passing. Um, my grandmother and I were best friends. And, I mean, she was close to me. She she actually passed away on my 16th birthday. Really? And what's really funny about it was two weeks before that, I was um, at a cab or at my best friend's grandparents' cabin, and I had a dream of her death. I saw the hospital bed with all of our family around it, the priest giving her her last rites, and I was never raised Catholic. And so I didn't even know what was going on. And I called my dad, and he's like, oh, she's fine. And then when I came home two weeks later, she passed away on my birthday. And um, when we were in the hospital, everyone was standing in the exact same spots. I recited the last rites, which I don't even know because I'm not raised Catholic, with everybody else. And then she stayed with me and visited me for the for at least two or three months afterwards. So wow. She, she was constantly with me for a while, and she... Um, she was, like, telling me that she was really upset with some of the family members um, and, uh, around a lot of things that were going on. And and in the way I feel her spirit, I can't necessarily understand all of her words. It's just I feel her emotion towards certain people. And um, so she was, she was telling me she was really angry at my, one of my aunts. Mm-hmm. And so when I went and seen this aunt at another where actually her her life partner passed like a couple months after and we were at his funeral and I was telling her, you know, grandma's really, really upset with you for some reason. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to stop. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, you just need to tell her to pass on. And I was like, well, she needs to, she needs you to know what you need to do to stop. Sure. And then literally a few months later, she was arrested for, for um, child molestation. Oh, boy. Yeah. So that was one of the weirdest ones. So she still visits me every once in a while when um, something's going on in the family where she wants to see what's going on. So it's now, interesting. It's a bit of an interview and a story all wrapped into one. We got people coming up to tell us their ghost story. And mm-hmm. 
that was really impactful. And how has that changed your view? Were you a believer before this all went down or were you a skeptic? Where, well, where were you at? I was always a believer because I've always seen spirits in the house that I grew up in. So, but they never spoke to me. I just always just saw them. And, um, and then I also had like another experience where a spirit came to me and was mumbling something next to my bed, but I didn't know who it was. And I found out my, my grandfather on my mom's side had passed away of throat cancer and I never got to say goodbye to him. So I'm just wondering if it was him because that, that spirit was there that one time and then gone. Sure. And, and so. just really quick, um, technically, technical question, can you raise the microphone a little bit? Oh, you have such yep. a great story to tell, but Sorry. but you do what I, I do quiet. sometimes. I go, whoop, and before I know it, it's down here, the microphone. and yeah. So Sorry that's real it. common. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, but you always believe, but then all those things happen. Now, since all that's gone on, ha- has it opened you to more, though? Have you had more of these Yes, definitely. Dreams? Well, it's... I do still have dreams. I've actually had dreams also when JFK Jr.'s plane disappeared and also Princess Diana, which I have no connection to whatever, whatsoever. But that was just weird. I just had these dreams, woke up, turned on the news, and it was on there. And What, what dreams were, what did the dreams consist of? Um, well, with my grandmother, it was her passing. And then with JFK Jr., it was him in his plane underwater. So, you, already, so you saw, saw that event. I saw that event, him underwater in the plane before they even found the plane and, and, or his body. Wow. Now, would you go on a limb and kind of say you're psychic that way then? That, I mean, you, I you just know? Think, I just think that um, God just sends me visions. I don't necessarily would say it was psychic. Do you ever ask yourself, what do I do with these visions? I mean, you know, why am I, you know, what am I going to do with them? You, right, you know? right. Uh, That's just the thing. I was taught at an early age because my dad was very um, standoffish against it. And so I was always taught to push it away. So I never really grew grew it. So I don't really have control over it. It just happens every once in a while. So I don't really, like I said, I've never been taught how to use it. So I just don't use it for my benefit. It's just like, okay, well, that happened. <laughs> Do you want more structure with how to use it, or you f- you like how how it works now? Well, I definitely would like more structure on it because I know there are certain people that I would like to contact and or would like to help out with because I, I like more of the helping people and like helping p- people move on because that would be like one of the other stories that I had. Sure, I that. we would love to hear any and all you want to tell. I mean, you know, that's why we're here. Okay, uh, yeah. that's why we're here at Paracon and we want to interact with the. Everybody at Paragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. it's an amazing event. I love this event. So, uh, well, the other event that's really impactful that everyone tends to like to know the story about is, well, everyone knows 9-11 was a huge incident. Everyone knows that there's unrested spirits everywhere probably from that event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we were visiting New York, and I would say it was right after they just got everything cleaned out and we were just starting to build the foundation. And we went to visit the site because they had all those memorial walls to go sign. And and so we were just walking from our hotel to there. I got like maybe a block away from it or a block and a half away from it. I couldn't even see the site yet. And I just felt a, like I was a rush of fire, like my body was burning. I felt um, like my lungs, I was breathing in smoke and my lungs were collapsing almost felt like. And I just fell to the ground against this building for a while. And then once I composed myself, I, I looked up and we looked at the building that I was on, fell on. Mm-hmm. It was the first responders um, firehouse. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it sounds like it's so vivid. You, you, yeah, you know and, what it, mean? and it's and like it, I felt the emotion. I didn't see any of it. I just felt, felt it. Just felt, felt it. It was felt. like almost empathic, just a rush. Exactly. Of the feeling. Mm-hmm. And how did you feel after that? I mean, what was your thoughts after having something like that happen? Um, well, that pretty much confirmed to me that me being able to feel other people's emotions was very, very accurate, that other people's emotions do affect me. And then this clearly is a place that has a lot of emotion attached to it. Have you learned to kind of control it maybe over the years? So, yeah, I mean, because you've got that grumpy person that comes next to you. Yeah, or anyone else, I mean, that might be empathic, and next thing you know, you know, the black cl- cloud is with you now because, you know, you beat up other exactly. people. Exactly. That actually happened to me last Paracon. I had somebody touch me that had a dark attachment with me, with them, and it, like, did follow me for a couple of weeks, so. 
Wow. That, that is amazing, though. Uh, thank mm-hmm. you so much for sharing your stories. Mm-hmm. And it just, it just goes to show you don't need to be a quote-unquote psychic or, or someone very prominent in the field. I mean, yeah. it can happen to anybody. It does it, happen it to does anybody. Happen to anybody mm-hmm. you, you know, and, and it's those kind of stories that really reaffirms most people's belief. Yeah. in the paranormal and how it works and sometimes we end up getting pulled in the paranormal whether we want to or not exactly. and sometimes it chooses us and it sounds like it chose you rather than you choosing it mm-hmm. definitely well that was quite the powerful tale and I'd yeah. like to thank her for coming on uh, yeah, that was really good we gotta give her a gift yep so what, what we got for you today Don is we got you a gift certificate to uh, I don't know if you've ever been here the Palmer House, and uh, I've it's, been there too. <laughs> it's uh, now give it to her. Don't keep it for yourself. Oh, All right, come on. Make sure. Man. Here's a twenty dollars gift certificate, courtesy, courtesy of the Palmer House. Of the Palmer House. All so right, next time you. you go there, have a drink or two on them. Enjoy yourself. Yep. Have a nice meal. Just go there. And enjoy yourself. We and love the Palmer. So. We do too. Yeah, and and thank you for sharing the story because it's doing this is very intimate. You know, it's a very it's it's really it's really revealing yourself, mm-hmm. and uh, it 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 takes courage and really appreciate that because that's you know that's how we all get to learn more about experiences by hearing everyone else's experiences. Mm-hmm. So thank you very much. You're yeah, definitely. That's Thanks great. a ton for coming on. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna even have maybe our very own ghost story, and I might just crack one open from Alcatraz. You're listening to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what's scarce. Hi, Tom Bodette. If pop culture is to be believed, roughly 40% of all people are actually vampires or dating one. Well, undead or not, you can always save on a clean, comfortable room at Motel 6, even if you sleep during the day because direct sunlight turns you into a pile of sparkly coffee grounds. Speaking of which, we have free coffee every morning. You day sleepers may want to go for the decaf. I'm Tom Bodette, and we'll leave the light on for you. Book online at motel6.com. Hi, I'm Kip Parker. And I'm Charlie Parker. And we're the The Parker Parker Brothers. Brothers. Hey, Charlie, what's missing from our game catalog? I don't know, Kip, tell me. Well, you can't talk to the dead. You sure as hell can. That's why we got this brand new game called Ouija. Ouija? Well, I, break that down for me. Well, it's Wii because you're having a great time. And gee, it's because, gee, aren't you having a blast because you're having a good time with the Wii? It looks like it smelled like a Chinaman got caught in there. Don't question it. <laughs> well, Ouija, Kip, tell me about it. Well, inside the package comes a flat board with all the letters of the alphabet, numbers from zero to nine, and a yes, no written out by itself. Well, that sounds like a lot of stuff going on. That's got a lot of stuff going on indeed, Charlie. It also comes with this planned jet which hovers over the letters the dead are trying to tell you. Well, how does that work, Chip? Well, you ask the question, and then the dead move your hands in the direction of the answers. That sounds like a heck of a way to find Grandpa's slave money. Turns out it was in the attic. But the questions don't have to be as serious as slavery. You can also find out if Sally's got a crush on you. The dead like to answer all sorts of trivial questions. Feels like they'd have better things to do with their time, Kip. No, lost souls are lost forever, and they're really glad to help. Well, gee, Kip, can't you just get any sort of board with numbers and letters and talk to the dead? The dead prefer quality like anybody else. Quality you can only find at Parker and Parker. The Ouija board, brought to you by the Parker Brothers, available in both white and colored Walworths. Separate but equal savings. Author Steve Asher brings us Hauntings of Trilogy, Steve's first book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary. This first installment of the trilogy tells us the tale of the Kentucky State Penitentiary and why it's so haunted. With every turn of the page will be something new and terrifying. Pick up Steve's new book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and all better bookstores everywhere. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? 
That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the wacky waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. You were dead. I saw you die. I was faking. I used Ninja Focus to slow my heart rate down. What are you doing? I'm burying you. I'm alive. I'm alive. You're waking the neighbors. No. Shut up. No. Now I'm going to play your drum set. Welcome to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what scares you. Welcome back to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. And right along with me is Mr. Greg Bach, and I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, and we have the distinct honor to sit down with Mr. Steve Gonzalez this afternoon. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you guys? You know, we're trying to survive. It's been a very hectic day over here. Live at Paracon 2017, Shooting Star Casino. Never been to one of these cons. Anyone that's listening, uh, in, within earshot, within reason, if never been here, get down here. And they can hobnob, meet everybody, and be with a lot of like-minded people. And you're one of those like-minded people. Absolutely. You know, this is my first time. I don't think we've ever sat down this one-on-one before. I've talked to you before in passing, but I've always wanted to ask you, Steve, what got you into the paranormal? Um, well, for me, it, it wasn't – a lot of people, you know, there's an experience or something that works as a catalyst. Sure. But, uh, for me, it was just uh, – I was always interested. You know, the first real – time i knew i was watching a movie called the entity uh, oh yeah yeah Great i wasn't film. supposed to because I, was, I think i was like eight years old or something and i was watching through my mother's fingers and uh, i remember her saying because i got really scared she's like it's all make-believe don't worry it's for tv and then tried to make me go to bed and then i saw at the end based on true events and ever since then i was hooked i went out and read you know all of Lloyd Arbach's books and all. I was gonna know. say that's Lloyd right there, and you know then you then it takes you to Barry Taft. I'm sure Barry when Taft. you were looking at his stuff, oh, yeah. Hans, you ended up oh, Hans holds you. Of you can't get away from him. I mean, no. if you're talking about the Godfathers or the founders, maybe of the modern day paranormal, the, that that would be the three. If you had to make yourself a Mount Rushmore, yeah. it would be them on there it, right it, now. It would be along it, with Jason Haas though, and Grant and yourself. I mean, uh, you guys are all in your own way responsible for furthering study we we're, we're in a fortunate position where i think we just sort of uh kicked open the doors for people who weren't already into the paranormal kind of said oh this is happening this is really cool but you're absolutely right like for me it was of course the warrens and uh, uh barry taft and uh, lloyd arbach is is honestly my hero his his book esp hunt you know changed my life um, and even I was fortunate enough that Dr. William G. Roll uh, to go and do an energy study with him at the Ryan Research Center. And, and that was when I was in my 20s. And that changed my life as well. So th- those guys, you're right. If you had to build a Mount Rushmore, Hans Holzer, Lloyd R. But, sure. You know, uh, it goes way back beyond oh, that. Oh, it, know, it got drawings, Harry Price. Thing. I mean, oh, for gosh, crying out loud. Yeah, look at you, 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 know, you know, wow. It goes way back. <laughs> of course. And, absolutely. And, uh, of course, I'm a student of the paranormal, being a radio host, so don't worry, Steve. I'm just a fountain of useless knowledge. Don't oh, worry. Hey. So, <laughs> you, you know, it's not that I'm smart. I just have to be up on everything really fast. <laughs> but, <laughs> don't don't uh, don't downplay yourself. <laughs> I'm hearing some wisdom. <laughs> some wisdom. And, and I know, uh, you know, watching what happened, now you talked about kicking the door open. I do remember, uh, I've been doing this for paranormal investigation for 20 plus years, right? And, sure. and when I was a young guy, all I had was a camera and a recorder, analog, both of them. Oh, and that's sure. actually what I still prefer to use because yeah. that's, you know, not, not trying to say it's the right way to go, but it's the way I was taught by at the Absolutely. time. A guy by the name of Brad Steiger, he wrote a million books. On okay. the, on the, uh, he took me under his wing out of Iowa. That's who taught me. And then, of course... Ed Warren taught me a lot of what I knew when he was alive as well. So, you you know, really helped me out. But talk about the history of the paranormal. I love doing that because it brings us back full circle why we're all here. 
Yeah, but what you guys did and what you were a part of, and I'm a big part of that, was you made it cool to talk about the paranormal where people didn't snicker at you at the water cooler if you said, boy, I have something weird in my house. Yeah, we didn't tell. We, I mean, when we first started, we couldn't tell people what we did. They just make fun of you. Even up to season two or three of our show, uh, we would be made fun of it. And all of a sudden, I remember towards the beginning of season three, I was the cool guy in the room. People were like, let me get my picture. And literally a year before, they're like, get out of here, creep. You know. Yeah. So you're right. There was a big swing. How did how did you handle that? Because you'd have to be at least a little bit like, oh, you're joking. You know, before you guys were just saying, go away. Now you you're interested in me. What's what's going on here? That's actually true. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, came around. But um, I think everybody had an interest or an inkling. But uh, and I don't mean this offensively, but. Before our show, it seemed like the paranormal community was very much everything was a ghost, everything. And people that weren't already into it were like, "How do, you know, they're not being objective. And the thing I heard a lot when we first started was, if I were to do it, that's what I would do. I wouldn't think everything is a ghost. And, and I think mm-hmm. that may be why people sort of latched onto us in the beginning. I, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say that I feel in some ways, you know, you, you say that before, and I even say it now that uh, Ghost Hunters to me, is still like one of the only shows that, you know, objectively looks at the uh, the evidence opposed to so many, to me, feels like that they're too quick to just want to get like some sort of evidence on, on screen and that, that you li- you'll, you'll listen to it or see and you'll be like, is that the best you can do? Yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, there should be that object, but it has changed where, you know, people want to use the paranormal just to get on TV. And, and I've noticed that we, we do a lot of interviews, yep. a lot of a lot of people, and we get requests. Uh, we get 100 requests a day for people to come on the show, and that's no right. joke. I mean, we have uh, Eric Olson. Is, he's uh, the Thursday night okay. a co-host, and he feels a lot of that. He, he's kind of take weeds out the people that are – Kind of the ones that really couldn't carry an hour and a half sure. you know, in a bucket if yep. they gave them one. Yep. And, and no offense to them, it's just that they haven't sat under the lear- learning tree long enough to really learn the paranormal. They, they, they yep. see the TV. We want to get on the TV. But you guys have been doing this a lot longer than you were doing the show. Oh, yeah. And, and that's maybe where they lose the perspective that it wasn't like overnight. Like you woke up one morning and said, you know, oh. when you contacted Jason going, you know what? Let's do a TV show this week. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, we, we said, we actually, Jay may have told you, I know you spoke to him, but uh, we said no for three years. We kept turning down offers for television. Because, like, wh- what do you mean? I remember saying to a producer, like, I, I was in a, in a dark room for, for six hours last night being completely silent. How is that a TV show? Like, right. we just didn't understand. Um, but then they told it, you know, and, and yeah. uh, you have to be objective. We turned, you know, we went to St. Augustine and, you know, we filmed The Lighthouse there, that sort of yep. thing. But, when we first got there, the place that we were supposed to investigate was like, okay, but you guys have to say it was haunted. And we're like, we're out. Never mind. And we just left, and we didn't do it. And that's actually how we ended up doing the lighthouse is by turning that case down. All the locals were like, you got to go check out the lighthouse because they're following our van around. And that's what we did. We did the lighthouse. So while uh, Ghost Hunters is on a, a bit of a hiatus, do you still do paranormal investigations in between, I mean, what, what, how, how, uh, how much do you do that sort of thing? Uh, quite a bit. Um, I mean, uh, going to people's houses, that sort of thing, uh, not as much as I would like to, uh, you know. Um, but when you, uh, uh, you know, well, well, for instance, we were at the Palmer House just just last week. Just yeah, right, you were yeah. last that's, week. Yeah, yep. That's our stomping ground. Yeah. So. Oh yep. man, that place is we'll have beautiful. To get, we'll have to collaborate later and get something going. Sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. Well, to be it's there a great place. And, but yeah, we're all we always investigate. We're always and, and like you said, you know, we got the show in, in two thousand and four. But I, I was a uh, with Jason all the way back ninety six. I, I think nineteen ninety six is when we met, and I was already working with the Warrens and New John's office. And yeah, so uh, I mean, we've all been in the field for a long time, and we were already a team. And then the show came to us. Uh, How has the Paracons? Because when I was in the field, I mean, young yeah. in the field. There was nothing like this. No, I mean, you, not. if you said you were in the graveyard at night trying to talk to dead people, you go to jail. They, yeah, and they laugh <laughs> yeah, at you. True. You're yeah. the weirdo with the recorder. What the hell are you doing out there? Absolutely. Has this shocked you? What you have been able to be part of to create these? 
experiences with like-minded people? Yeah, it, it's very strange to me, and, and I saw it, you know, I, I, we would, taps, you know, we would do events and stuff, but there would be 20, 30 people, you know, 15 people, we were still a large group, you know. And then season one, and then I got asked to go to a Comic-Con in Iowa. I said, hey, people love you. And I got there, and there was a huge line. And I was like, oh, you guys have a great turnout. And he's like, this is your line. Like, this is, and I was like, My, what do you mean? And there was 1,500 people And I did see your there, line here you know. today, and it, it was quite well, impressive. Well, we, we do well. At, and to be honest, the Paracons are amazing. Um, but I don't get asked to many Paracons. I'm not sure why. I do this one at Michigan Paracon, and mm-hmm. maybe one or two others, but... I'm mostly at, at like Comic Cons and that sort of yeah. thing. Are, are you very selective of the Paracons you attend? Or, no, uh, I love them. Okay. I, I learn just as uh, what I like about going to these events, Paracons, is I learn just as much from other people as I don't like to talk. I don't learn anything when I'm talking, uh, you right. know. But yeah. I learn. The, the from reason other why people. I brought up the selection and uh, had Greg not vouched for this Paracon, I wouldn't be here. Okay, because uh, yeah. I'm I w- I'm very selective of where I go. Yep. You know, because I've gone to different events, and it's like, oh, my Lord, you had 12 people show up. And here I am with a giant, you know, radio system ready to go. And so when uh, we talked to the fine folks here at Shooting Star, we got things rolling, it was clear that they were serious and they knew what they were doing. Sure. And, and there's a lot of them that want radio coverage, but, you know, you've got to have something that warrants something of that magnitude. Yep. Now, that being said, the same thing for you. I, I, was, I was imagining that, you know, the smaller stuff would be great to do, but financially and feasibly, it would be impossible. We, you know, we're, we're in a fortunate position where, where people will come to meet us, that sort of thing. And it depends on, on the place. Paracons, we, we do quite well, but... We're in a position where our panels, are, wherever we are, are always mm-hmm. pretty packed, and, and we have a good time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of people look up to uh, TAPS. A lot of people are you know, really into uh, – I've heard so many people say, I'd love to do my own investigations. I'd love to do, you know, be doing all this stuff. And with so many people who look up to what you all have started – what advice would you give to people who haven't investigated before but are, you know, basically all they've done so far is watch TV shows? What, in, what kind of advice would you give to them? I, I would say really no, because people, you know, they'll watch the show and they'll pick up an EMF gauge and think they're just, you know, but they need to know. You know, I was in a room recently uh, just a month ago with a thousand investigators, and I asked them all to write down what their EMF gauge does. And I got at least 40 different answers. If I was at a, a dental convention and I asked them what their Novocaine did, we would get the same answer. Yeah. You know? yeah. Everybody needs to be on that same page. And I ask investigators all the time, well, what does your EMF gauge do? And I've never heard once anybody actually acknowledge that it's radiation. Can you know, I pin you down for a minute? Sure. Just, just for a second. Well, what do you mean? Pin, well, we, uh, no, here we is go. This, I, this is, a point blank this is question. where the questions get real. Yeah, this, okay. this is where the journalist hat goes on. Yes, sir. Do you believe that there needs to be standards and practices in the paranormal? That way, if someone is going to be out there, it's all the same way of doing it. So, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are scientists, yep. and we've had a lot of high name scientists on the show. We have neuroscientists, we have this. And sure. their biggest thing is because of a lack of standards and practices, uh, they will never move any further because everyone's doing it differently. And sure. they can't bring that into the, the laboratory if everyone's yep. got their own way. Yep. Do you believe that there should be some rudimentary standard of practices with, with equipment and things like that? That way maybe we can bring it to science one day. Absolutely. Uh, there should be. But the problem, like we, we work a lot with MIT and, and different uh, – and they have always said until you can completely control your environment – Yep. Or recreate it in a laboratory. There's no way to really create those standards and that sort yep. of thing. But, but a protocol and procedure system should definitely be in, in place. And, uh, you know, I ask people all the time, laser grid's awesome, but, but nobody knows that laser means light amplification by stimulated mm-hmm. emission radiation. Like, you mm-hmm. need to know these things. You, you need to know your equipment. And you also you know. need to know what corrupts it. Uh, 100%. That's right. Yep. You guys are, 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 are smart fellows. Well, you. We, we try to be, but, y- y- you know. It, it's, it's funny because, I mean... We see it. We see it all the time. I see it on my Facebook pages. All the stuff of people who maybe are well-meaning, but they don't know how to to do an investigation, or they. And you know, it can be dangerous for a multitude of reasons. Sure. And and so you know, it's there's been a trend of you know certain shows that make it look 
like you know there's one way of doing it it might be pr- provocation might be sort of things and it's it's always reassuring to see that that is not the road that you have ever gone down no and i, I mean we will provoke but it's a technique we implement when it's called when, when it's necessary it's not our you know you need to respire people who were once alive Yep. Now, gone through things none of us want to think about. Yeah. Who are we to say, show yourself, come around, you know? And plus, yeah. you, you get more bees with honey than you do. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know it's that, like so. we've told about a million guests, it seems, these days, that when we, we come around to talk about provoking, and that for a long time was the thing in the paranormal, sure. of course. But sure. it's like I tell them, if I was a guy just hanging around, and you walked on the street, and you walked up to me and started screaming at me, you better tell me who you are. I, I'm not going to talk to you. Right. I'm done, man. Yeah. I'm walking away. Absolutely. And there's the same thing with them. I mean, they're just people without skin now. I mean, yeah. they've transcended. Their vessel's gone. That, that, that's it. Uh, you know. I mean, we think that's what the leading case study, but as we all know, there's no... There is zero fact. There is zero. Yeah. There's not one expert in this field because it's impossible. Uh, we're all just a, a collective uh, trying to figure things out together. Where do you see the field going? Where, where, where do you see we're going next? I see. I see the field heading in in a direction of maybe getting. Uh, you know, uh, well, first off, uh, better evidence collection and analysis. But but I think the uh, personal connection is where it's, it's gonna gonna. Maybe come away from everybody needs to get evidence. Everybody needs to have their photo and their to more. Let's find the human connection and figure out what we're all doing here together. That sort of thing. No, it makes sense. That does, you know, find out the root and find out what yeah. we all mean. Right. Yep. And then we'll have a better understanding of what's next if we understand what's now. Absolutely, you can learn a lot about the future by looking at the now and the, the past. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. what do you think of the gadgetry? Are, are, are you a gadget guy? Or are oh, you more about just a ba- no. plain Jane kind of guy like gadget I am? To the, to the max. I, 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 What's your favorite? crazy, uh, thermal, What's your favorite? all day. Yeah. Thermal? Yeah. It's the most irrefutable in, in the eyes of science. You know, yeah. It's pretty black and white. It is or mm-hmm. it isn't that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, that, that's pretty important. I, I would agree. I, yeah. I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, you, you is, know... Is there something out there, though, gadget-wise, that you think is pretty pretty ridiculous? Like, you look like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to make any friends here, but all those, like, spirit boxes. Oh! Ghost boxes. <laughs> I mean, it's just, who is the linguist? There's no linguist that can well, take a, 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 you know, it's just, we've given those devices to MIT. Yeah. They tell us what it does, and it's, you know, mm. have fun with it, but it's not. Uh, I've anyway. always been a skeptic on them. Yeah. Uh, being a radio engineer, I sure. know exactly how sound works, yeah. and. And then you get the matrixing that goes right, on, sure. which is which is actually a radio terminology for frequency mm-hmm. of sound. Matrixing is actually when the sound waves cross, and that's what causes the matrixing. Pareidolia is with vision, right. by the way. Just yep. just clearing that up for anyone that's listening. Yep. There is a big difference. Yep. Um, when I've heard people uh, use the ghost box, and it, and it goes, I'm like, right. you. There is a possibility. That you are catching snippets, and there's always what they call audio lag too inside yeah. a device. That sometimes, if you're if you're using a, an old school r- radio, right, that last transmission will actually bleed into the new transmission because you have a transmission lag, so it may create a word. Sure, sure. It, it, it didn't even intend to, yeah. but there it is. It's put yep. together, and oh my god, next thing you know, you're running with it. Absolutely. Now I have seen some absolutely phenomenal stuff out of it. Sure, where I've said, hmm. That makes me pique my interest. I, I'm a skeptical believer. Yep. And but, go ahead. I was just going to say, I am a spirit box guy. But okay, I think sure. what, and, and, but I do agree with what you're saying because you have to go into it with not everything that comes through is going to be a response. And, yeah. and like, in my mind, if you can get something that is, first of all, over a syllable, you know, that – that's something a little bit more interesting, at least than, like, my name is Greg. It's one syllable. So if I get something that's like, Whoa. it's like right away people are like, I think that was your name. Or it was nothing at all. And that's more likely what it's going to be. Smart. Smart. Well, well, you're looking at it the way you should, objectively. And you're not letting... I see a lot of people with these devices, they let the device lead them, Mm. which is you shouldn't. You know, they'll say, where are you? Show yourself. They'll wait five minutes and it'll say, floor. I knew it. It's buried right under us. But they don't... You know, they're just making it make sense because they want to believe so bad. And that's that's dangerous in this field. Misinterpretation is a killer in this field. Oh, yeah. I mean... There are people out there that everything's haunted. Absolutely. Ham sandwich is haunted. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, yeah. and, and so that, that God bless them. 
I, I say that to them. You know, God bless you for trying, but it, it's not haunted. I mean, that that's just not paranormal. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to go through and do, do your due diligence and make sure Absolutely. it is paranormal. Yeah. Debunk it to the best of your ability, then come back to me. Yeah. And if it holds water, we'll get you on air, and you could be the one cracking the giant case. This is how the paranormal <laughs> yeah. works. Here yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, well, that's a, speaking of that, like those devices, like you know, if that was true that we could communicate with the other side back and forth, why would that be in our? It would be the breakthrough of the century. Scientist, it would be on every newspaper in New York. It would be what everybody in the world has been looking for since the inception of time. Why we're here? Can we communicate with dead? How would it be in our hands? How, how would it not yeah. be with NASA? How would it not be? I mean, it mm. would be a global phenomenon that would take over the world. It would. And if you're that guy to invent it, you yeah. would be the richest man That's instantly, right. but the most hated man instantly. That's right. So you got to, there's a double edged sword yeah. there with uh, yeah. every discovery. Mm. But people need to remember, I'm, I'm one investigator of many, and there's people I love dearly who use these devices, and I trust them. <laughs> Sorry, he was going to get Grant Wilson, God of mercy. Um, you know, and. and I so, see the hook. We we gotta get you out of here. Right? Oh, we're yeah. out of time. Oh, no <laughs> but uh, uh, we got Grant coming. He he's he's. We're actually late for Grant. Oh gosh. But Grant, you know, if he wants to come sit down, come on, Grant, and, and uh, you know, we're having a great discussion. Uh, 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 Grant, I'm gonna hand you this can over. Stay uh, or you uh, can go. It's entirely up I, to I you. May, uh, uh, you uh, should you stay or should you go now? Hey, I really enjoyed your panel, Grant. There you Listen go. To it? Of course, I was in it. Yeah. Oh wow, it's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Wilson is now with us, and of well, course, hello. it's been hello, a heck of a week. Thank you guys. I have this. Uh, thank you guys. Hey, Great Steve, to talk. Wonderful talk. Thank you for the time. Again. Yeah, thank and, you very uh, much. Love to have you back on the show. Where Anytime. We can give a proper interview. Please, my pleasure. Anytime. All right, take care, okay. guys. Thank you. Thank you. And it's time for hugs. That's always it, good. It is. It is. You know, we're not getting any photo ops. That was the biggest complaint from our listeners today. Is where's the photos? to go with these interviews. So like, are we really love, talking yeah, to these people? I know, yeah, I know. We got to get that done, right? <laughs> we hired a Grant I'm Wilson so, impersonator. I'm so uh, ugly I, I am Grant Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I, he's Grant Wilson. I Our, approve of this interview. <laughs> My friends call me Grant Wilson. <laughs> how's it going, guys? Good. How about you? How's your How's your time here at Paracon 2017? Lovely. I love it. This is my favorite event to do. Yeah? And I know yeah. that sounds like... A canned answer? It's not. It's, it's Minnesota nice. I really it? love it. It's so the, the casino takes such good care of us. Everyone here is so cool. Everyone's relaxed Wait at this event. The casino takes good care of you. Yes, you, you, they put us in the alley back See? there next That's to the dumpster. Than the dumpster. So <laughs> no, we're next to it. But you're not but in it. No, someone already <laughs> occupied it. It rained last night. That's my room. That's right. Angry. Yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Of course. No, they do a bang up job and doing just, this. It's just great, and the people who come are so sweet and nice. And you see a healthy percentage of people you've seen before, so it's like a reunion. Yeah, there's yep. always new faces. I just love it. I love it. And you have a couple of uh, there's a couple teams locally here that are Taps family members. I'm sure you know and yes, and they are uh, quite honestly some of the best yep. out there. They yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I mean just pro. Yeah, knowledgeable. You know, not walking around in trench coats and. <laughs> and shorts on, no. No, <laughs> or no shorts on. You, you never know. You cross, just never know. You don't want to ask, yeah. otherwise you'll know, show. And yeah. you know, but uh, your booth though has been absolutely off the wall busy. Yes, um, you know, people just love them some grand. And, and I'll never understand it. Yeah, well, me neither. No, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, you know, of course, you, you you stepped away from Ghost Hunters. A long time ago, the TV show yes. for your own personal family reasons, right? yep. and that I respect that. Thank you, because I'd give up radio in a heartbeat if I had to. <laughs> yeah, and believe me, if they paid me more somewhere else, I'd be gone anyway. Well, that actually that actually happened. Like I got to the point and flew Jay and I flew out to LA and said, "This is not worth it." Yeah, yeah. you know, we've uh, got you got to do something because we were working six days a week. Uh, yeah. I had my best friend. I saw him at uh, New Year's Eve. And then mm-hmm. I see him again to my birthday in July. Like, mm-hmm. it was that busy. It's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, and the question really was, now, everybody, you know what's coming next. Everybody has asked this question to me, knowing that I was going to be talking with you. Any chance of you coming back in any capacity to tell vision? So I can never do it the way I did it before. I love my wife and my three mm-hmm. kids too much. And, and Nick Groff kind of opened up that door, I'll be honest. He's a good buddy of mine. Me and Nick I go way Nick. back. Yeah. And he, you were on Paranormal Lockdown. Yeah. And, my, man, the, it was a fury of a buzz when you were on there like, oh, 
Was there? <laughs> is he going to be part of the show now? Is Grant Will? No, no, I don't think he is going to be part of the show because I was talking to Nick and he says, Nick, Nick says to me, emails me, he says, watch this bomb I'm about to drop. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, all right, because he's uh, pretty much a, a standard on After Hours AM. We had Hell Nick yeah. on once a month. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah, he's absolutely. A, and and uh, really, they've treated us well. Nick is one of my best friends, so it's kind of funny. We banter back and cool. forth. So. But uh, game beyond that, name dropping and who we know. No. What you're doing, though, is you're also in game development. I don't know if a lot of people know that. Yeah. And, and that, I find, equally fascinating <laughs> is the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Now, we're getting ready to, and I'll give the mic over to you. Oh, right, whatever. Really yeah, quickly. that's totally fine. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to have some folks that develop the new, the, the new Friday the 13th game. Yes. And they want oh, some yeah. radio what time, and we're going to give them some time. They're going to come on. But what they're different, and this is why we're going to have them on, it was completely funded through Kickstarter, of all things. I never thought go anywhere. I mean, they got hold of me a couple of years ago saying, hey, we're going to do this, Kickstarter, bring back Friday the 13th. Does that shock you as a game consultant that a whole group of people, people that love the source material, material, can make that happen? This is the wonderful part of being alive now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Kickstarter in general, we actually, I kickstarted a board game just to see what it was about. It was a terrible experience <laughs> from my side. It's like having another kid. You have to manage this thing, and it stresses you out. You yeah. Know? Um, but I, I love the fact that we can all decide what we love and make it a reality. Yeah. Yeah. It's like quantum level, you know, world mm-hmm. manipulation here. So we can... Uh, th- and that game is fantastic. Yeah, I played a little bit, and Kane Hodder, of all people, did a lot the of bullshit. I know, Kane, I know yeah. Kane's a great guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and so when we were talking about... The, with them, the developers, they're they are really not like, that's not their day job. Game development no. wasn't their day job. I'm, well, this is like, what? what's great about Kickstarter is that you can um, test it. You can put an I- out the idea out there and test yeah. it. And if it goes crazy, then you have the funding to do it. If it yeah. doesn't, you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. There's yeah. really no risk. Right. I mean, you know, you make a small video or whatever, throw it out there, and if you get the money, you get the money. If not, oh well. But surprisingly, uh, you know, there's just... I feel like with video games, we've had the revolution we had when, like, uh, Napster came out for music, yeah. right? No. It's a dirty word, but we... I know it is. So, <laughs> filthy. So, uh, you know, we were, we were all programmed by what the radios wanted to play, you know? And then yeah. nowadays, it's so easy for people to get the music out there with Pandora and things like that. Now this is happening with video games, with Steam and stuff like that, just everything. It, it is really... I really like when you said it's, it's a great time to be alive because I, I get your point of... If you want to do it, you can do it because there are those, those all those avenues now to to make it possible. What what is it about um, gaming that and games in general that excites you? Oh, well, it's a it's a fun way to escape together. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. a lot of people like to escape alone, and that ends up bad usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, yeah, you escape well, together, is. and uh, for you know thirty. Bucks, yeah. You have this thing you can keep doing. Go on a ride, man. Go on a ride. And, 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 a ride and, and I, I love creativity. I love being creative, and the making a board game kind of is a summation of all of that. Yeah. I'm designing the art. I draw the art. <clears throat> I'm designing the helping design the mechanics. My friend Mike does them mm-hmm. primarily, and I'm building a world around this. I have to build lore into this thing because yep. you're going on a ride through this. So I'm. Basically, each game is a little world I get to create. It's all yeah. yours, and they, they have to yep. be different. And it's just a summation of everything. I'm well, I got a question: do. How much time do we have left for Grant? Because I was thinking I think doing a giveaway with Grant here. Yep. Someone coming up, sure, asking them a trivia question. If you wouldn't mind taking part in this, <laughs> sure. you know about Ghost Hunters, okay? And, and you can give. the I have to come up with a question. No, I will oh, come up okay. with a question. No, don't, That's don't too worry. much stress for me. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind. Okay. We're going to have to think of a good one. What, what, what do you think, Greg? Should we do this? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's see hey, what happens. Anyone that wants to win a gift, come on forward. Grant, Grant, Grant Wilson, Interactive Grant, and we will get you uh, a free gift. And I can see nobody's coming nope, forward. We have a brave. Everyone is, is frightened of Grant. Thing. They're all frightened yeah, there. I think everyone pushed him forward. Yeah, like, you do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what should the question be really quickly for, for a deserving member of the studio audience? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, know. I don't know. I, Grant said he wanted to come up with a question. No, I, I didn't. Oh, I, Grant did I just oh, heard oh, it. Oh, oh, I said, oh, I, oh, I, said okay. I, I love coming up with sure questions. I'm pretty sure said the opposite to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. How many toes does Jason Hawes have? No. Uh, what was the final <laughs> location that Grant Wilson was on on Ghost Hunters? 
That, that could be a trick question. Uh, oh, so, yeah. so. But this is for this is for one of the Fate magazine posters. Though. This I'll is for the hundred dollar magazine. Serious, this is serious prize money here, man. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh not a fan. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Not a fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Sorry. That's why I started my lecture with, who knows what Ghost Hunters is? <laughs> and who actually liked the show? I'm like, okay. Well, do we have a, do, do we have a consolation prize? We have a... Uh, Grab a book off the table. Consolation prize, yep. if you'd like. Preferably the free ones that were given away. No, <laughs> yeah, just kidding. No, that would be the best. <laughs> Grab any of the books. Pick one of the books off the so, table. So, Grant, I was going to ask while we're to trying to here. figure this out, um, have you ever done or thought about like doing like an escape room? Okay, so get this. <laughs> I was at, at the height of the show. One of the things, we, like, we obviously bought the uh, Spalding Inn. Hint, hint, I, I was going to say, at, yeah. Uh, <laughs> at, uh, you know. Um, thank you, guys. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. It's $10, it says. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we bought Go the ahead. Spalding Inn because we were looking for something like that, you know, yeah. a place we could bring people to investigate. But our original idea was <coughs> to buy, like, a bed and breakfast. Sure. Right? Maybe like a 12-room thing. Yeah. And have a couple of the rooms, like, dial your own ghost up. So, like, the place would be haunted, and these 10 rooms are normal and stuff will happen. But these two other rooms would have, like, three different levels of haunt- simulated haunting that you could experience. So if you just want to have a creepy, maybe there's a figure on the end of your bed. That, or you hear that is ingenious. And then you, yeah. could, you could kick it up to, you know, your bed might move. Or, you know, you kick it up to just, like, to your craziness. But you can determine that. That'd be fun. And we, you know, we worked with. Uh, I worked with a group in Massachusetts uh, called Five Wits. They have a couple uh, things they mm. do. Their guys worked with Disney and building rides and stuff like that. So they're very high quality, and they had that kind yeah. of magic. And we were going to work with them, but we realized that this is just too much work. <laughs> well, I was going to say the expense and the work. You, you, you know, it, it, that would be a big undertaking and. Be fun though, you, you know, when you brought that up, because I remember they went on an investigation where one of the places was kind of wired up. Yes, too. That's why I laughed. Orly. because I'm thinking, wait a minute, didn't you I? You had see to this fix already? everything. Yeah, you guys were in there. You're fixing it. <laughs> They're fixing the place up. They're like, oh, why is there a speaker in the wall? Yeah. We'll, we'll make it haunted eventually. You know? Eventually, <laughs> we'll get it. We'll, we'll find the owner and we'll definitely make it haunted. Come here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that case was hilarious because. The poor guy who showed us around was just like the head chef. Yeah, he didn't even know. He's like, he was totally no broadsided. Idea. Yeah. They, he told us after the reveal, he said, the owners told me not to tell you about this. Oh. So he was totally just. Oh. oh well, attracted well, dirt. But the whole ride to that reveal was Jason Hall. It was just quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And then he looks at me. He goes, he was so mad. He's like, you're going to have to do the talking on this one, G. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Yeah, Come on, Grant. Out of him. Come on, step up. You got to deal with this, not me. Yeah, I don't want to deal with this. Crap. Yeah, yeah, not not me. Uh, you know, you do more than just now. Are you still? Are you an active investigator anymore? Or do you yes. Not? Okay. So um, I moved out of New England. I now live in Kentucky. Oh, beautiful uh, Kentucky. Yeah, right. It's beautiful. And um, I, I've been doing this for twenty eight years, right? So the more you do it, the easier it is to solve the problem without actually even having to go there. So mm-hmm. I'm helping a lot of people and other teams through email and, and stuff. And, oh, the lovely Tori. Is here. Oh, he's here. Mr. Tori Valici <laughs> is coming to the studio waiting his turn. So don't worry, folks. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm doing an investigation, you know, primarily with my wife and some friends. Sure. But most of it is just being able to handle it over the phone yeah. or through email. Yeah. yeah. And I would imagine it gets overwhelming I mean, you know, I mean, you want to help everybody. You yeah. do. But you just can't. You like, can't. You know, like I was saying, we must get, uh, we were just talking with Steve Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah, of course. you come. We get 100, 200 emails a day just for the show, wanting to come on or wanting to reach out to this person we had on. Or more importantly lately, wanting to get a TV show, yeah. B, to get on the radio show, how to start their own radio show. That's the biggest one we get, of course, because we are in radio. Yeah. But it's like I tell them, A, don't quit your day job. And B, you gotta have the talent to do it. Yeah, you, you, you can't fake it, and you gotta have the skills. You I'm gotta telling have the you, the grass isn't as green as people think it is. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work, and it's great because being well known opens doors. Yeah, um, so that's that's nice. And I was talking today to someone. I said the best thing about being well known is that how easy it is to make somebody's day. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? You just say hi, take a picture, and yeah. you've made their day. And, and then there's a lot of power with that, though, too. I mean, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I've noticed that over the years of doing radio. Well, heck, I could tear them down or I can build them up. Really, I, I'm in control right now of yeah. you know, every every moment. And so I see the way you interact with everybody. You, you truly value everybody. And, I mean it, and, yeah. and you do, and it's genuine. Thank you. But that's with everybody here, Tori, and he'll be coming on next. I see him interacting with fans. And that's something here that I, I, this is my first year at this Paracon. I don't do a lot of Paracons. I was very skeptical of This them is the one. Because I'm thinking, do I have to put my radio credibility on the line? Because we, <laughs> we do a paranormal show. Greg, you turn me on to the Paracon. We're going to do a piece of trivia, if that's okay. Oh, we are. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. Give something away. We'll, we'll put a pin in it. Of it and, <laughs> and we want to give something away. And Okay. See you in a little bit, Tori. Um, how about this? We have Superfan here. What is your name? Superfan. Ashley. Superfan. Ashley. Ashley, have you met Grant before? Yeah. Oh. Hi. How are you? Okay. How are you? I'll trade places with you. <laughs> <laughs> He's wow. like, I'm done with these guys. Okay, oh like, what, what's that all about? Surprise okay, signature. So, sure. before Steve took over as a tech manager job, who was the tech manager for TAPS? I don't know. That That's is not the wrong their name. Guy. <laughs> he was the one that was in charge of the catering. Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't he a craft service? Yeah, he was craft services. <laughs> he was in charge of Twizzlers. <laughs> I almost say we still give away just because we'll never get rid well, of it otherwise. Does anyone else want a shot? Anyone want a shot at winning? Or, or I do. I would like to try. Uh, I would like to play. I, I, I bet you would. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? Consolation prize time? We're really out of consolation prizes. Let's just... Do we have to do this? We are, aren't we? Yeah, we should. Oh, it's going to hurt. Okay. All Here right. you go. Oh, oh man. I go. really wanted that one for my studio. If, oh. if, it, doesn't, if oh. it doesn't fit, just fold it to get into your suitcase, okay? <laughs> That's courtesy of Fate You're Magazine. Welcome. Uh, yeah, sign away. Sure. I'll sign it if you want me to, but you may not want my signature. I'll sign. I'll sign it. Grant's name. That's how I've been doing with <laughs> yeah. the credit card bills. <laughs> That's how we did the checks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Grant, getting back to like a serious yes. matter, of radio at hand. You know, you're still. You still investigate but you yes you help a lot of people they get a hold of you they go well what do you think it is yeah and when you come and, to me on twitter or facebook that's me i don't have anyone else doing it so yeah. i'm doing the best i can so if you send an email be patient yeah it <laughs> takes a little time yeah. and and you guys have started taps family and this is something that i didn't get to with jay when he jason when he was on we just didn't have enough time okay. that has just been has that taken off bigger than you guys even anticipated when you started the affiliate groups yes uh we really just knew a few groups or we kept getting cases and we we didn't want them to fall flat these people really needed help and we couldn't go to california to help them mm. so uh you know i was to, came up with the idea for the taps family and we started putting it out there and slowly grew and honestly the what it takes to get into it now it's really hard really yeah. what's it take if i have a group and I want to go and, and put my app in. Yeah. And I'm not an internationally known radio guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? With a, with a huge, <laughs> you know, normal person. We're talking about Joe Blow. Okay. He signs up because I'm joking, of course, because we're not that big of a deal. No, we're not. I, <laughs> I don't know why you keep bigger. saying stuff like that. But I anyway, don't know why. You're gonna <laughs> please stop. It's weird. This, right? It's really strange. <laughs> uh, no, but let's just say you got Group B or A, whoever. Yeah. John Q. Public's group wants to become Taps family. Uh-huh. What is the protocol? So uh, you, when we started, you had to be uh, in an existing group for at least two years. I think that's moved up to five. Oh. Um, so they want to make sure you're going to stick around. And uh, you can't charge to investigate. Now we're uh, out. Yep. No, no we cannot do that. <laughs> donuts don't count. You can charge yeah. donuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can't charge. And you have to. Everyone's has. I believe they've done a background check when you when you come close to everybody mm-hmm. in there. They don't want to be affiliated with a, anybody on Any, the yep, sex nope, offender list. Nope, devious makes sense. devious um, things. Yeah. And uh, there's, it's just a long, convoluted process of getting to trust this team that they're actually going to represent. Mm. And we, we don't demand they investigate it any certain way, but they have to hold up the standards that we do. So we're not be, if they screw up, that's on them completely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, like, don't bring the Ouija board on the investigation. Right. There are at least some protocols yes. that, that you would want to keep, at least in the spirit of yep. the TAPS yep. organization. And you, this professionalism, the site is heavily reviewed. There can't be any dead links on the site. You can't, you know, uh, you can't, uh, you have to have, I believe you have to have the pictures of the investigators on the site so that when they come to your door, they, you know, people can recognize you and feel that safety. Sure. And, yeah. And all that, yeah. That that is, uh, I've seen more and more taps family out there, but they're 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 raising the. You're right. The five the bar year is mark, very high. The five year mm. mark seems to have been really where things got raised, and, and um, I don't want to say better investigators because they're all good in their own right, but they're more experienced, be, seen a little bit more, dealt with a little bit more. Yep. Where I think five years is probably right in that perfect zone to yep. be able to be able to discern between a, someone's faking. Evidence, and then you know, or someone speaking well, claims. Well, not only or, that, but you have to you have to make sure these groups are uh, conscious of things like uh, if you give someone advice and they take it and get hurt or die, that's on you. Yeah, you have to yeah. know how to talk to them Absolutely. in such a way that you protect yourself. Yeah, and, and well, you have to. That's that's always one thing that when when Tab's family was coming on, and, and I saw new groups that were part of Tab's mm-hmm. family. And they'd wear their little patches, and they're like, we're Taps family, and they're all proud. And I'm like, all right, I got a decoder ring right here. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, huh. and, and I didn't know what it was all about, so I kind of joke with them and go, yeah, uh-huh. But the thing of it is, is I've noticed now that, that a lot of groups are in the Taps family, and it's blown up to be huge. And it's, it's really, are you guys in any way, is there, is there a cap? Is there a limit? Is there a ceiling where you guys are going to be like, okay, too many families now? And are we reaching that ceiling? Yeah. Um, like I said, being in the family is no small achievement. You know, yeah. if someone wears that patch or whatever, then Does, they, d- they deserve it. Do you ever have groups that leave? That oh, yeah. It's a constantly fluctuating because gotcha. groups, you know, they have dynamics. And, and after five years, you might realize that the two founders have differing views. And so they split into two groups or whatever. Sure. Yeah. That's, it's always a revolving door like You that. know, Grant, um, and I'm, I'll give you the mic. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that. you're, you're One really time. quick one that comes a lot. And you might... You're a really genuine person, and both of, we're clicking right here really well. <laughs> what do you think about paradrama? I hate it. There's I mean, no reason I, for I it. I mean, that was that's the question that keeps popping up today. Was was just talk about it a little bit, touch on it, and we've noticed even in the radio circles, you know, I mean, people are cutting each other down to get on like radio shows. Like I'll book somebody, come on, and I'll get email with some some anonymous person going, mm-hmm. "That person sucks. You shouldn't have them on the air." <laughs> and, and, and it's like, Thank well, you. why are you guys? Yeah, <laughs> yeah why are right. you guys cutting your your own so throats? There's an interesting phenomenon. If I can take a minute here, yeah. that uh, this is a unique field in the fact that um, in the fa- in the fact that there's no true experts in this field. Yeah, it's only credibility and and experience that really you know solidifies you in this field. Yeah. So in a field where it's still like in its infancy, it's still f- kind of mm-hmm. fluid. People who are shysters see a golden opportunity. Sure. Yeah. I can come sure. in. I can say whatever I want. I can make up whatever story and I can get rich quick with a book or yeah. a TV show or be on a radio show. Yeah. And uh, it really was a problem when Ghost Hunters was at its height. I, I see this all the time. And it's just like. Stop! And there was, you know, people walking around in bedazzled jeans and yeah, and no, I, I, affliction yeah. clothing yeah. and all stuff like. Th- th- stop! Yeah, like that's not what it's about. And I yeah. never understood uh, the territorial wars and stuff that are going yeah. on. And th- that takes me back to your question previously about Taps family. Is that's the only thing that would limit this size? Is we don't want too much overlap. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's yeah. a question right. I had. I mean, you know, if someone or a group is, is actively partaking in something that's, you know paradrama or, or, or actively downing another group. Is that looked at oh, yeah. badly in Tab's family? Yep. Zero bullying is what I'm asking. Yeah. Is. Um, it's, there are stuff like that can be investigated and um, but we don't we basically our mentality is you're adults figure it out. Yeah that's what you I know hope what I mean? would yeah. happen is you know what grow a pair and deal with it on your yeah, own. Exactly and, and yeah. we don't do that if, if there's drama we'll, we'll kick them both out we don't yeah. care. That's good to hear because it, it there is always that you just look on Facebook and you know you, you might, I might follow a lot of paranormal teams and you just see people you know as I joke Thursday night you know have their arms crossed and look <laughs> at and it's like yeah. well how's how does that actually further the field 
You know, it's like at, at first you're just like overwhelmed. You're just looking at all these people. But now it's for me, it's like, what are people doing to further the field? You know, and, and even furthering the field is just getting good, solid uh, responses, evidence, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to the underlying goal. There, it's the difference between a paranormal. Ironically, the show's called Ghost Hunters. I, we fought that. But yeah. there's a difference between a paranormal investigator and a ghost hunter. A good friend of mine, Barry Taft, would say that same thing. Yeah. Well, me and Barry, and we talked about him earlier. With, with, I, you know, and it, difference. It, it, it is interesting because I, I love the series. I love the series, but the, the term ghost hunter for me is a bit difficult only because as I hated it. I, I, I don't hunt anything. Yeah, it's not you what know? I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's the thing is you can decide what you are based on your goals. Yeah. Are you yeah. trying to find evidence? Are you trying to have your own experiences? You're a ghost hunter. Are you trying to find the truth and help people? Yeah. You're a paranormal uh, investigator. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that is the big difference. I always considered the thrill seeker in the cemetery to be the ghost hunter. Yeah. We used to call them uh, grave stompers back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then if, if Barry or Lloyd were here, they'd be saying... What are they? A psycho, uh, paranormal psychologists or uh, yeah, yeah, parapsychologists yeah. is where yeah. they would be calling right. It. Yep. Which is, if you ask them, that's a whole nother thing. It is, and, yeah. and so it's like and wow. metaphysics is yet another. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So Grant, I really want to thank you for stopping in. Yeah, thank you. I know you got to get going. Yeah, because my love manager has a all. baseball bat. I, you know, yeah, I she noticed does. her walking around yeah. with that ball bat. I don't know if she wants to go Negan on us right now or what's going to happen here. And if hap- if that does happen, oh, yeah, yeah, nope, you're, nope. You're, you're the grant of the walking dead over here. Yeah, no, so. see, that's unfair. <laughs> I mean no harm to anyone. <laughs> all right. Hey, Appreciate again, the time, guys. Hey, thank Grant, you very much. Grant, thanks. Grant Wilson, everyone, thank Ghost so Hunters. Much. And uh, more to come. We didn't even touch on him being... A musician. A musician. Yep. And, I mean, we could go on and on. That's when you come back. Well, we will have him back on the show, guys, I promise, for a full proper interview where we can we can talk more about his musical side. Thank you so much. Talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. And we're going to be right out of here. We're going to hopefully get Tori on the show here quickly. And I, he was in the green room, so to speak, but he did take off on us, so I will track him down. Be right back right after this. You're listening to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what's good. Hi, Tom Bodette. If pop culture is to be believed, roughly 40% of all people are actually vampires or dating one. Well, undead or not, you can always save on a clean, comfortable room at Motel 6, even if you sleep during the day because direct sunlight turns you into a pile of sparkly coffee grounds. Speaking of which, we have free coffee every morning. You day sleepers may want to go for the decaf. I'm Tom Bodette, and we'll leave the light on for you. Book online at motel6.com. Hi, I'm Kip Parker. And I'm Charlie Parker. And we're the Parker Parker Brothers. Brothers. Hey, Charlie, what's missing from our game catalog? I don't know, Kip, tell me. Well, you can't talk to the dead. You sure as hell can. That's why we got this brand new game called Ouija. Ouija? Well, I, break that down for me. Well, it's Wii because you're having a great time. And gee, it's because gee, aren't you having a blast because you're having a good time with the Wii? It looks like it smelled like a Chinaman got caught in there. Don't question it. Well, Ouija, Kip, tell me about it. Well, inside the package comes a flat board with all the letters of the alphabet, numbers from zero to nine, and a yes-no written out by itself. Well, that sounds like a lot of stuff going on. It's got a lot of stuff going on indeed, Charlie. It also comes with this planchette which hovers over the letters the dead are trying to tell you. Well, how does that work, Chip? Well, you ask the question, and then the dead move your hands in the direction of the answers. That sounds like a heck of a way to find Grandpa's slave money. Turns out it was in the attic. But the questions don't have to be as serious as slavery. You can also find out if Sally's got a crush on you. The dead like to answer all sorts of trivial questions. Feels like they'd have better things to do with their time, Kip. No, lost souls are lost forever, and they're really glad to help. Well, gee, Kip, can't you just get any sort of board with numbers and letters and talk to the dead? The dead prefer quality like anybody else. Quality you can only find at Parker and Parker. The Ouija board, brought to you by the Parker Brothers, available in both white and colored Walworths. Separate but equal savings. Author Steve Asher brings us Hauntings of Trilogy, Steve's first book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary. 
This first installment of the trilogy tells us the tale of the Kentucky State Penitentiary and why it's so haunted. With every turn of the page will be something new and terrifying. Pick up Steve's new book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and all better bookstores everywhere. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope. It's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. You were dead! I saw you die! I was faking. I used Ninja Focus to slow my heart rate down. What are you doing? I'm burying you. I'm alive! I'm alive! You're waking the neighbors! No, Shut up! No! no. Now I'm going to play your drum set. Welcome to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what skills And welcome back to After Hours AM, everybody. I'm your host, Joe Sturz. Right along with me is, well, my favorite Mythbuster, oh, you're Tori Valachi, is with us right now. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Ready. Are you enjoying Paracon 2017? Yeah. This is a different experience for me. I've done a lot of conventions like Comic-Con and Dragon Con, where it's a lot of superheroes and comic book characters. This is the first paranormal convention I've ever done. And, you know, I kind of got roped into it from uh, Steve Gonzalez. Okay. He so I, He and I have been friends for years, and he called me up. He's like, hey, what are you doing on this weekend? You want to come up and hang out with me? I was like, <laughs> yeah. What, I, I got, Sign me up. Uh, sounds fun. Yeah, why not? And, and is there a different vibe to a, a Paracon than there is what you've been to in the yes, past? Yes, definitely. I mean, usually when you go to one of these Comic Cons, you you yeah. look around and people are dressed like superheroes. I almost did that. I almost came in as Deadpool. See? But, but, you know, it's hard to do radio in the car. You yep, 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 I been. So I was expecting out. to see people dressed like Bigfoot. Yeah. Maybe people. Well, in, we can make in, that happen. And I have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, getting back to what you're saying, you, you, you're expecting to see. You, you don't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. And then he was like, oh, it's at this hotel, at a casino. And I was just like, what is this convention going to look like? But it has been a blast so far. Yeah, it really has been. And and your booth is busy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to sneak in and talk with you quick, get you on air. It's like, wow, I got cut through all the girls yeah, to get right. there. I mean, yeah, now right. it was kind of weird. I'm like, wow, this guy is more popular than, wow, look at him go. <laughs> no, but uh, in all we seriousness. Had a, we had a really fun panel yesterday. Steve was the, he, he was hosting it. I was showing clips from old Mythbusters and from our new show, White Rabbit Project, on Netflix. And we just, it literally just turned into a big party. We, we had a blast. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you were on Mythbusters how many seasons? Uh, I was there for about 11 or 12 seasons. And uh, you tried, you were the daredevil. If it could I, be done, you were going to do I, it. I was the, the, like, the human... Dummy, the human test dummy. Yes, you yeah. were. And did you ever get hurt though? I, I mean, hurt. like, where you didn't disclose it, but man, you were banged up. I got hurt a lot. However, out of all the years of being on the show, um, I only went to the emergency once. Uh, only one time because you're that tough. No, no, no. I just it was the first time that I actually needed to be rushed to the hospital. We were doing um, Hollywood hang Hollywood myths, and it was like. You know, you see the the action movie, the guy's hanging on to the edge of a I, building. I do know what you're talking about. How long can you hold on? And so we did it, and I was belayed, so I was falling. I'm not going to fall to the ground, but I fell about 10 feet, and I hit my shin on the edge of a concrete wall oh. of the window, and blood started going everywhere. I had to go to the hospital, get stitches. That was the first Real big injury. What What do the producers do and the directors do when they see you get hurt? Oh, Is they it? were freaking out. Yeah, because they they can't. They don't want you to get hurt. No, not at all. And you know, so I get down to the ground. They let me down, and we were doing this at this fire station. 
and they had this fire tower that we were hanging off of. Sure. And so my leg was just gushing blood, so there was all this blood on the concrete. And then went to the hospital, got the stitches. Next day, came back, and the fire department was like, hey, would you feel okay about signing the concrete next to your blood? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, leave that, the blood there. I was like, that is the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever asked, been asked to did sign. Did you do it? Yeah, totally. You, you <laughs> actually did it, though. You signed it. Okay, yeah, here, here's my signature. Now, you love this show. You can tell just when you go back, watch past episodes. And then, of course, I watched every one of them. Thank so you. I'm thinking, wow, Tori's going to be there. I, I got to go check this thing out, you know, and at least talk to him and see how things have been going. Now you have the White Rabbit Project. Yeah, so once we finished up on Mythbusters, Netflix approached us in our production company and wanted to do a similar show. So it's Grant, Carrie, and myself, and we're just looking at cool things in science and technology. Uh, episode one is superpowers. Mm-hmm. So what what do we have in technology and in, in science in today's like in the present day that we could build to be superheroes yeah do, do you now do you find it more liberating on netflix yeah uh, they, they were very like let us do whatever we wanted to do so there was no holds barred you could do whatever myth you wanted within your own reason yeah and we you know they they barely gave us any notes you know with, with, <laughs> oh, when we were doing me. Mythbusters, discovery channel would come back with like change this tweet yeah. this that. Yeah. where netflix they were like just Finish the show and deliver yeah, it. Yeah, give us some content. Yeah. You, you, you know, they let, and they let the creatives just be creative. And that's beautiful that yeah. they do that because, you know, you're right, because TV sometimes gets in its own way. Yeah. You, you know, they don't let the creative process right. happen. They you, pick you know? it to death. Yeah, they do. They do. I've been involved with some TV shows and stuff, and, and that's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah, you get like, too uh, many cooks in the kitchen. Y- yeah, and, just... and everybody has a say. Yeah. And by the time it finally hits where it airs, it's not what you shot. No. You're and like, it's wow, like there's where, no clear vision happen? of one person or one kind of group going, this is, we w- this is what we want it to look yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. So Editing. Yeah, I mean, plus editing happens. Yeah. No, I hear you. Fix it in post. You. Yeah. And, and so... Any chance of you going back? I, I've heard whispers, and maybe we can put it to bed, of Mythbusters coming back on air uh, as a regular rotation. Well, so what they are doing now is they did a show where they replaced us. <laughs> I <laughs> saw that they, show. Yeah. And so, it, it would, uh, to be completely honest, and I, I love Mythbusters, and I've talked to Jamie before, and I've talked to all of them before. Yeah. And, and uh, Adam Savage, great guy, but... They needed you guys. I, I mean, know. it wasn't it, the same. It, it, it was it, kind of it weird. It was, was kind of weird. But it, it, at the same time, when we got the Netflix show, it was, it was wow. kind of like, all right, sweet, we're moving on to <laughs> But it was funny. It was like places. stepping into alternate universe. Oh, to yeah. Where this is what it could have been. Oh, totally. Well, it was funny because they did the search for the Mythbusters. It was a competition show. Yeah. And so each of the builders would get eliminated. I do remember that. Yeah. And then it was getting down to the end and the last three people, it was a white dude, an Asian guy, and a redheaded girl. And they and they are kind of like, oh. Like the, yeah. the, oh, the, hey, we is, see the parallels. Oh, shoot. Maybe we had yeah. the right formula. Yeah. But then I yeah. think they ended up voting the girl off, so now it's just the two guys. Well, how did you get in on the show? I mean, what was that like to get on Mythbusters? Or what was your thought on getting a show like Mythbusters? So none of us thought it was going to go anywhere. I mean, we thought it was like a one-year, one-season show. Yeah. Uh, I had worked with Jamie and Adam. You know, on Star Wars and yeah. Matrix, we'd worked on special effects for movies for years. Sure. So I knew all those guys. I knew Grant, uh, and then when they got, we were all working on the Matrix at the time. They left. Jamie and Adam left to go do this pilot for this new show on Discovery Channel. It got picked up, and so season two, they called me and said, "Hey, we're looking for more builders. People. Ah, oh, okay. And okay. You'll be a background character. You won't have to. You know, because I was like, I, I was terrified. I was like, yeah." I don't, I don't have to talk, right? Yeah. And they're like, nope. You're just, you just build. We'll do the testing. We'll do the talking. Every once in a while, they'll film you building something, but you don't have to be a host. I was like, great. I got that. <laughs> Relieved, right? I can build stuff. I yeah. know how to do that. Yeah. And so about two weeks into production, it was actually taking longer. So they said, okay, you guys, build team, you guys have to host. You have to become hosts. You, you know, and, and you really took to it really well. All three of you I don't did. think we I, don't I think thought I did. you guys did oh, great. And, I thought it was horrible for and, like and the you know, first three Adam years. and Jamie had come on. They'd be doing, you know, myths, which is great, you yeah. know. But then you, you three guys would come on. It's like, 
here comes the comic relief, and I mean that with all the sincerity. No, totally. And, we were we were the like respect in the world. Yeah, and I'm thinking because that was always more enjoyable because you did the actual physical comedy, if you will, and put your your body at peril. You didn't see Jamie and Adam do that too often. No, not they. I, I learned too late that I need to say no more often. Well. That was, my, that was my problem. It was like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. And, there's, a, and there's a little thing called camera courage. That, that when is the, true. When the camera's rolling, you think you're invincible and you're not going to yeah, get hurt. Yeah, and there's no stunt double either that takes your place. Exactly. That, you learn that the hard way yeah. as well. You, you know, so uh, let's talk a little bit mo- mo- more about White Rabbit Project. Yeah. What kind of myths are you guys so, tackling so on that one? So we're not necessarily looking at myths. Each episode has a different theme. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing is we are exploring investigating each of these kind of stories. Any paranormal in there? No, we did. Oh. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, let's see, we did superpowers. Mm-hmm. We did uh, famous cons, con artists. See, now we do a true crime show. We just covered D.B. Cooper. Yes. And, so and, we yep. did D.B. Cooper. And did you know that they suspect that he may have survived? Yeah. And, uh, that's the rumor around. And might anyway. have gotten a sex change. Okay, that's a new one on yeah, me. When we that had was the, new to me too. Uh, the DB Cooper people, the official DB Cooper investigators yeah. on. Okay, they believed it might have been someone that lived in Canada, and yeah. because he uh, yeah. DB Cooper was a character, a Canadian comic book. Yep, and yes, they they thought it was him, and in fact, one of his relatives tried to out him as DB Cooper. Yeah. Going, oh, I think that might be DB Cooper because the guy served. Or I think either the U.S. or Canada during the Vietnam conflict. Yeah. And he would do a very similar jump. Yeah. And so uh, you've heard this story, obviously, yeah, yeah, before. Totally. And so that's what they're – that's the angle. But now the sex change, that's well, completely so, yeah, new so on we are, we are digging a little deeper, and it, there, was, there was one story that he ended up going through a sex change and lived the rest of his life as a woman. In harmony. In harmony. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. You, you, you know, he stole money and a lot of it, but not yeah. enough to yeah. <laughs> want to get a sex change and go live in a But I mean, this might have been his, like, he wanted to do this, yeah. get this transformation, and this was his chance to do it, yeah. right? He needed the money. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. We got to do pictures. So don't worry. We'll get that all done. Um, no, but yeah, that, that case intrigues me. But that's just one of them you guys have tackled. Yeah. Well, what else? What's so then, been your favorites? So we looked at um, biggest heists, mm-hmm. jail heists, uh, jail escapes. What was the biggest one? Obviously, well, Alcatraz. We, have, we looked at Alcatraz. No, actually, we didn't touch on Alcatraz because it's too well known. Maybe we have done it so, like that one had been done to death. That's right. That's right. I, I do believe Mythbusters did do. Yes, that we one. did for season one. We, we yep. tested that. Yeah. But we looked at like El Chapo. Yep. Escaping from the Mexican jail. Yeah, like seven or eight different times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy in um, South America that his girlfriend came in for a conjugal visit, and she brought in they they swapped clothes, and he had a wig. So he tried. He got out. Of, he actually escaped the prison, <laughs> but by left her up, back there. By dre- yes, by dressing up like a woman, and he got out of the prison. Until they saw, they found her, and then they ran out and caught him. <laughs> it worked short time. They, yeah. they, they got him though. Yeah. And, and did uh, did any? How did you guys test the one where he? How did you end up testing those? I mean, obviously, well, so who the, donned the wig? So we didn't. We didn't necessarily test every single one. Some some of them we built devices and tested them. Sure. But a lot of them we just kind of retold the story and just just reenactments. And I mean, there were such ridiculous stories that it was like. We got to show this. This, yeah. is, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, Tori, that we means that we're at Paracon 2017. This after hours AM radio. After all, do you believe in the paranormal? I believe, and a lot of people were asking me. You know, they're like, "What are you doing here?" Yeah, yeah. You're a MythBuster. Like your whole career was it's busting deep, crap. We deep, love debunking <laughs> stuff like that. And you know, just because we did a lot of science on the show um, doesn't mean. There aren't things that are unexplainable, you know. I, I still, there, you know, I, I believe not in everything, but, I mean, there are certain things that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah. It, th- there, there could be something there. Yeah. 
Greg, uh, I see you just joined us here in the booth. You, uh, talk to Tori Valachi over here, Mythbusters. Yeah, you know, I and mean, it's been great. I mean, the, the, it makes me wonder the question: Have you ever thought of like a paranormal show that's breaking down uh, ways well, to investigate? Well, Steve Gonzalez and I have talked about doing a show together forever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we don't know what that would look like. Whether it was just mysteries, you know, around the world or around the country, but actually doing kind of a because we always had the same fan base. We'd go to these conventions. And sure. It was like Mythbusters was on Wednesday nights at 9. Yeah. Ghost Hunters yeah. was on the same time on just two different networks. And so we yeah. would have fans going, oh, my God, it's so hard because yeah. we don't know yeah. which, which one, one to watch. Which one do we choose? Yep. Yeah. And so we've always had this huge crossover of fans. So we think it would just be a, a, a perfect match. Who do you um, envision? I mean, what would you what I think what Greg was saying, and I think it'd be great, is like go find out if Bigfoot's real or, or ghosts and things like that. And not only, you know, go one step further than the paranormal shows, but actually use real current science behind it. Maybe that would be something. I, I think you guys could get something together. I really yeah. do. And, and it's tough. I mean, that, you know, TV's hard. It's hard TV's because hard. to catch something like that to prove it or disprove it, it's like, how do you, how, you know, how do you start? Do you know how do you actually catch it? Exactly. Uh, how do you make it quantifiable? Yeah. That you know that way it's it, it's repeatable as well. Yeah. I mean, even you know? when we know what we're trying to achieve, yeah. it takes hours and hours of filming, and you still don't get it right, and you have to go back and redo it. Yeah. You know, for something like this where you're trying to catch these moments or these incidences, it's you know it would be tough. It really would be tough, and I, I believe this is anyone that pulled it off would be you guys though. Yeah, you know, I really do believe that. We'll, we just had Steve here we'll, we'll a use, little bit ago. We'll, we'll do a little talk. Ghostbusters. Yeah, you, we'll, sh- you should we'll try make that. Some proton packs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It'd be something. Yeah, nuclear device in your back, walking around. You know, why not? You, you know, what could it hurt? Really, don't cross the streams. Yeah, don't, don't cross those streams. But uh, you know, talking about what you've done on MythBusters and now the White Rabbit Project and and I've noticed that you you guys kept the team together for White Rabbit Project. Yeah, so and that was something that was really cool for me. It was. And that, you know, a lot of people were happy to see us back together again. You know. D- did you have to kind of maybe uh, you know, twist an arm or two or talk to them really hard to want to come back and do more, more No, TV? I mean we we were super excited just to be working with Netflix. Um, yeah. just because that I mean, that's the new platform, right? That's it's the like new Netflix. HBO. I mean, that is yeah. just everywhere. It's In like fact, you we got work Hulu, with, you got yeah. Amazon. It's like streaming is the new it, it form seems of to be, entertainment. Yeah, that, that, and that's mainly because the development of new devices that yeah. allow you to take your TV anywhere yeah. that require high-speed connectivity. And commercials drive me crazy. They, like, well, they do. They, they drive like, me crazy extra. as well. I'll pay extra not to have to watch commercials. Yeah, what is 11 bucks a month now for Netflix? Yeah. I mean, come on. You know, that's yeah. cheap entertainment. And cables, you know, if you're getting the full package, you're looking at like 150. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and it's hurt TV too. Um, we've had other TV stars on the show, lots of different mainstream actors. In fact, we just had a lot of uh, we do a lot of Discovery Channel work on the okay. sh- on the on the show, and we just had a uh, he, he actually won an Oscar. He did the he recently did the um, and it's escaping me right now, but he just did the uh, Unabomber show. That oh, was yeah, 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 okay. And he had mentioned, and not to throw him under the bus, but he did say this publicly, but commercials kind of take away the spirit sometimes of the show because yeah. they'll get to a point where the fever pitch is going and they got to go commercial. Yeah, And it totally. takes that whole momentum away from it. Well, that, that was something that we had to learn with this Netflix show because on Mythbusters, we would always have to retell what had just happened in the previous mm. sequence, mm-hmm. right? The, the previous, you know, before the mm-hmm. break. So basically, you would jump back in, and the first, you know, thirty seconds would be retelling what the person had just watched. So in case yeah. somebody tuned in at that moment, yeah, where Netflix are like, you don't have commercials, you don't need to keep retelling, yeah, exactly. What happened and, before? And just keep telling the story. Then you got a show called Stranger Things that shows oh up. Oh my gosh! So you know, awesome. out of nowhere. Yeah. And they really didn't believe this thing was going to do a whole lot of anything. Yeah. Because they're like, took, well, it's it kids lead and, you know, we'll see what yeah. it does. And, and it was um, like all the things we loved about the 80s. Oh, God, it, it was like a greatest hits uh, film role show. 
of a creepy show from the 80s and I, I like you I'm a child of the 80s yeah. I mean we all uh, I'm 43 years old and you're in that ballpark yeah. I'm sure of it so we all grew up with probably the 13th and totally. Freddy Krueger yeah. and all those references that they were making in E.T. E. E. yeah and so it's like right in my wheelhouse I'm yeah. like oh man it's the greatest yeah. thing I've ever seen totally. and, and I have been trying to we've had them on the show we're gonna get them back on the show oh awesome to talk about season two yeah, but, yeah. man they're a little bit more important than they yeah, were before they might be a little so, Harder to get it now. has been, and then it came out, and that well, of course. It's funny with it watching it, it just reminded me. I mean, Stranger Things is basically it, you know, w- without y- the clown. Y- yeah, yeah. I mean, it's this alien that's going around killing kids. It was yeah. like, you know, I was watching it. We went to the theater. We saw that, and, and that same thought that you guys are having. Stranger Things is it without the clown. You don't visually see the clown. Right. And that's really the only difference. But that clown I mean, was an alien. Yeah. Or uh, something, or a demon. I don't yeah, know. So yeah. Was... Uh, Winona, Winona Ryder, good friend of mine. Oh, right. Relived on. her, made her career come back. Yeah. So I was really happy to see that. Totally. You know, she's Minnesota represent over there, you know. That's good old awesome. Winona. And, yeah. And, and, and then so... that one kid, and that's why watching it, because that kid was in it from yes. Stranger Things. And yep. he was like, Confusing me. I was like, wait, what am I watching? I'm watching yeah, it. Yeah. I'm watching yeah. Stranger Things. But, you know, and then there's, the, you look at it and you go, how can these little kids be such big stars now? Yeah. No, it took us forever to get where we are. Right. And here they show up with the right talent, the right chemistry, and the right mix yeah. on a streaming service that really, you know, no one thought would produce anything of that quality. And here we are talking about it. Yeah. And now they're actually so big. And not to take away from your interview, but we're both just fans of good television. Yeah, right. They have to now explore licensing opportunities where people want their their jackets that say Stranger Things and their backpacks. I I mean, it was a phenomenon. It really was. was talking about it. It really was. And, And, of course, you were talking about how streaming has changed the way TV is oh, totally. and, and, and the way people watch TV. You know, has it changed your career though, streaming? Have you noticed that maybe fans are a little more, they can focus a little more on the shows and, and maybe they, you get a bigger, more rabid fan base because there's no interruption. Well, I, I feel like we got the show because Mythbusters used to be on Netflix and then mm-hmm. it went over to Hulu. Yep. And I think that there was enough people searching for Mythbusters that they're like, let's give them a show similar to that, yeah, um, and just the way people watch now, you know, I, like, and I'm the same way. I I don't want to wait a whole week for the next episode. I wanna, yeah. I wanna, I'm a binger as I'm well. Binge, when I, I crush, find it, I want to crush through those yeah I, I, episodes. I don't like waiting. No, you, you know, I want, I want my I want my entertainment now. That's right. This is an on demand. I got world. I got like six hours to kill. <laughs> That's right. I got stuff to do, man. I don't know if you know that or not. I got to crank through this. Y- yeah. Yeah, so you know, we talked about all that, and and Tori, you know, it's really an honor. I'm, I don't think we've ever met girl. in person before. This is the first time. I've actually interviewed you before, I, I, if, but over the radio. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, over the radio. Yeah. You'll have you come on. Um, I think it was uh, we had you and Jamie on one time. Okay, and he threw you totally under the bus. You know, <laughs> you know like he, you know, we were joking, and yeah, and, and of course, like all that stuff. But um, now it kind of seems like. When it comes to all this, one thing I've noticed, you kind of come into your own now. You guys truly came into your own. Yeah, that, because that was Because we watched cool. it go from Builders and Obscurity, where you're showing a little bit here and there. Yeah. And then you got your own segments, and now your own show. What's next for you? Are you going to the movies? What, what do you envision well, next so for you? Well, so right now we are gearing up for a live tour around the Netflix show. So we're going to do six cities starting in November. We're, we're, right now it's mostly, mostly West Coast. So we're doing uh, Seattle, Portland. San Diego, San Jose, and then I think we're going out to Salt Lake City. But so we're just we're doing the West Coast. If that goes well, then we'll roll it out to the rest of the country. So it's it's very cool. Kind of like people can come, bring their families, and get involved. Actually, be on stage and participate in the experiment. So it's going to be very a cool, cool Tori. You know, I again. Good stuff. Glad you're here. Thank you. I mean, really, the fans have really responded. And then when, like, when we were doing the MC, and you're, we were sitting next to yeah, that's right, dinner, that's where we met. And I'm like, how is Tori fitting into this whole mix? <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. In my head right away, right. But really, quite honestly, fans are fans. Yeah, and and, and they really took to you, and I and I want to see you come back to more of these awesome. things because I'd you. love to see you more of you at this yeah. kind of stuff. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, you too, Tori. You guys are awesome. Thank you, you too, so much, Tori. And thank yeah. you so much for coming on, Tori Valici, everybody. Man, he is the Mythbuster you want to like, who you want to know, and who you want to be like. (laughs) We'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Hey, you're listening to After Hours AM, and if you're listening to us via podcast, make sure you like us, follow us, review us, tell your friends about us, tell grandma about us, and keep listening. This is Jen McGowan, founder of Wayward Souls Promotions, a company dedicated to helping individuals, teams, radio shows, and others that are seeking exposure for their individual events, conventions, and shows. We offer a wide variety of advertising, such as web-based article, social media posts, podcast advertisement, and so on. Contact us at paranormalpromotion at gmail.com, visit us on Facebook at Wayward Souls Promotions, and visit our website at www.waywardsoulspromotions.com. Hi, Tom Bodette. If pop culture is to be believed, roughly 40% of all people are actually vampires or dating one. Well, undead or not, you can always save on a clean, comfortable room at Motel 6, even if you sleep during the day because direct sunlight turns you into a pile of sparkly coffee grounds. Speaking of which, we have free coffee every morning. You day sleepers may want to go for the decaf. I'm Tom Bodette, and we'll leave the light on for you. Book online at motel6.com. Author Steve Asher brings us Hauntings of Trilogy, Steve's first book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary. This first installment of the trilogy tells us the tale of the Kentucky State Penitentiary and why it's so haunted. With every turn of the page, there will be something new and terrifying. Pick up Steve's new book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and all better bookstores everywhere. You're listening to After Hours AM. Do you have a question for the guests or even the host? That's really easy. Go ahead and email those questions to AfterHoursAM at gmail.com. Are you feeling like picking up the phone and being part of the show? Call us at 612-326-6874. 612-326-6874. Come be part of the madness. Welcome back to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis. Right along with me, as always, Mr. Greg Bach. And, Hello. And we have two of, the, well, two of my favorites on. I, I yep. mean, I watch Ghost Lab re- religiously. Great guys. Yeah. Both just, you know, I used to live actually in Texas at one time. Okay. And it kind of takes you right back to where I was living. They're just nice, good people. And no exception here. The Kling Brothers. But I'm going to allow you each to introduce yourselves. I'm Barry. Appreciate being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you so and much. And I'm Brad. Hey, Brad. I'm going to try to match that voice, but I can't I can go it. lower. If you oh, there you went. It blew me out of the That's water. Fantastic. You, you know, <laughs> and of course, everybody remembers them from Discovery Channel's Ghost Lab. And it was a great, it's still it. It's a great show. Yep. And you guys are doing uh, Strange Curiosities now, which is, I love it. I mean, I've seen the videos and stuff, and... and I don't want you guys never left. Someone threw the word "come back" at me the other day. I'm like, "What do you mean? They never left?" Yeah, it's been you know seven years ago when it got canceled, but we've been hard at it every single year since then. So we've been speaking engagements and events and things like this and writing books and whatnot. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been uh, we've been at it the entire time. We've never gone away. Yeah, I think there was one point there when the show initially got canceled that we kind of took a break yeah. a little bit because. The show took a lot out of us. I mean, it was about two years of 17-hour days and six to eight weeks on the road and two, three days back home constantly. And uh, so I think maybe that's what – because we did go out and say, hey, you know what? You're not going to see us for a little bit. We're going to kind of take be on a little bit of hiatus. But we came back full force um, after that point in time. We just needed to, you know, to kind of regain our composures. Absolutely. What – what uh what drives your passion with all this? Because, like you said, you're doing so much. What What is keeping you moving and 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 doing all of this? Really, for me, it's uh, you know, we, our fans, the people that support us. Other, yeah. I, I feel like obligated obligated to you know give them something because they're always always there when we need them. They're coming to our events. They're uh, you know always at when you gonna be back on TV. When it, so I feel obligated to produce something. And of course, we're passionate about it. We have fun at it, and we really like the film aspect of it. And we love meeting people, so play, things like this we love to be at. But it's really the, the just just pleasing people, I guess, and, and, and putting the stuff back out there. We don't want to go away. We, we want the Kling Brothers to keep going on. We want to 
like I said, I feel obligated to give them something. So that's the way I do it. It's, it's, it's compassion, too. You know, a lot, a lot of people that you see who had television shows, if their television show goes away, they're not just going to continue just to keep on doing stuff. And this is stuff we do out on our own dime. Yep. It's stuff that we Yeah, have. I was going to say. It's, it's, it's back to the original. We had the original Everyday Paranormal before the TV show. You know, the same passion is there. And, but just now we have, a, we have a larger worldwide audience, and we go to places like Australia, and we can go over to Europe and, and do the things that we love and, and kind of spread that joy around. Now, this is my first year this particular Paracon. Is this your first year coming to the, the Minnesota? Second. We were the very year. first one. The very oh, first wow. one we were here, and now we're here this year. Uh, how do you guys feel about the Minnesota nights? You liking it up here, enjoying the crowd and everything? Yes, the, the weather is the best. So we went to a football a game cooler. here last night, yeah. and uh, we're in shorts, T-shirt, Everybody else is bundled up. We're, we're used to 90-degree temperatures right now. Yeah, we don't get that around here. Everyone should be used to it. We think they'd be in shorts, too, in this weather. But, uh, um, yeah, we, we took in a local football game. And actually, and I'm not just saying this, but this is probably the best. We've been to Scarefest and all those kind of stuff. This is probably the best Paracon there is out there. I mean, lots of people, mm-hmm. lots of, you know, everyone is just interested in everybody. And it just it's a good time. You know, um, Yesterday, Greg, I, I, yeah. I kind of popped around the event area because I always like to get to know personally when I'm in an interview because I feel, you know, hey, it, we're, we're people pe- yep. we're people persons over here. And one thing that I, I wasn't uh, really ready for, Barry, you work with children. You're an educator, and I did not know that. And that really spoke to me. And, and the love that you had, the way your face lit up, I just want to give you all the respect in the world. I appreciate it. I work with uh, you know, special needs kids. I, I teach special ed PE. And so we've actually uh, we told a story in our, in our talk earlier about uh, a lady came by and had a letter from one of her clients. It's a special needs adult. And uh, he loved Ghost Slides, big fan. He wrote us a letter. We wrote back to him. And we had a, even a kid with autism come by earlier yesterday and super excited about us and he wants to be a ghost hunter and those are the kind of things that we get out of this that's why we do it you know it's just those those people that if they, a lot of times it's very they think people are unapproachable we're super approachable yeah we talk to anybody we talk about whatever they want to talk about i mean we're talking to you guys about yeah, well, exactly that took, you that know took a lot, that and took only a lot two of our best buddies out there a lot out of us to talk yeah. to y'all guys but you, you kept you hounding know, us you're talking, to oh, God. talking to us that's the thing uh, yeah we we were definitely <laughs> after restraining you guys. orders you know well you know we walk right through those those are nothing to last us last time you saw me was in texas no i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> under that bush next to your house so you mentioned one thing that you liked is is uh i thought you said film like filming um did you have any, did either of you had any interest or done any uh uh shooting or production work or anything before you got your show no i mean you know other than having the old the video camera and, and doing skateboard videos and stuff when we were little sure. you know it's nothing like that but it was it was it was free film school for us we saw yeah. how they did audio. We saw how they spliced. We saw how they synced. We saw how they filmed cross interviews, different techniques, lighting techniques, all this kind of stuff. We watched the whole time. And then now that we're on our own, say, so, hey, we can do this thing. And I guarantee, and I'm not just saying this, but the, the, the quality of, of production quality of what we put out is as good as anything that's on television. Of and course. it's because we I learned agree. directly from those well, guys. I, I, I would definitely agree. And, and, well, the guy works for IBM over here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, you, my, you know, that's so, my day job, yeah, my day yeah, and night so, job. I mean, so you know, we're not talking <laughs> about some guy that doesn't on. understand computers over here and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that's something that you both have been good at, and from the beginning, very savvy business people too. You, you know, and there's something to be said for doing it your way or my way. I mean, doing it on your own terms. Yeah, we're like Burger King, actually. Yeah. BK, Barry Kling, Brad Kling. <laughs> yeah, and, and not everybody has that opportunity. And I, and I've been kind of watching your careers and and getting to know you know you guys through social media. And this is our my first interview with them, believe it or not. Okay, Greg, I've never had them on the air before. We've had everybody else, and it's always been. I've always wanted to get you guys on because your shows and, and Ghost Lab and everything else is just so honest and real. And I know it's reality, but I mean, even further, it's real. You know, we, um, we've, we've, Barry and I have talked a lot about that too. And it's like, you know, there's a, there's a clustering of paranormal people. So, like, up in, you got Zaphis and the Taps guys, they're all up in that New England area. Then you have kind of a Midwest, Ohio Valley, you know, type. Way down in Texas, we're pretty much it. I mean, there's other paranormal teams, but as far as having that 
large network. There's not a lot of people down there. So we like coming, you know, further out to kind of start networking with those other folks. Yeah, it's, it's valuable. Greg will t- attest to that, the networking oh, yeah. you I know, mean, at these uh, events and, is invaluable. And, and get rid of the ego, right? I mean, I'm not telling you guys get rid of your egos. I'm just saying that it's like there's no ego. That's after all that. Yeah, look at that. He uh, insults you. Ah, you guys I'm, got I'm ego. pretty good at ruining interviews. This was your last interview with the yeah. brothers. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. It's like that's that's the only way that you're going to be able to to uh, do that networking and whatever. Is like you guys don't have egos. You talk to like-minded people. Don't have egos. And I say it because in the paranormal field, there's a lot of egos. There's a lot of egos, and of course, it comes with. You know, the popularity of shows and the more popular, you know, yeah. not to say that people have, you know, certain people have egos, but. Well, there's some always, people have egos that don't even have shows, and they're just yeah. regular groups. Exactly. Yeah. But we've so, always, exactly. we've been taught right. Our mom and dad raised us the right way, and we've, uh, our egos, we, we do have egos, don't say we don't, but we put them in check. You know, there, there's a time and place to be, you know, have your egos flare out, but we're very down to earth. If you, if you saw our talk or listened to our talk today, we're, we're, we're real. We're, we're, you know, tell you like it is. If you don't like it, sorry. But that's, that's Texas. Just, that's I Texas. Mean, that's that how really we, is. The that's Bible how we rolled in the Republic of Texas. That, so. Yeah, that area is uh, when I was down there, and paranormal was something you know you'd snicker about and under your breath. And up north was a little more. It kind of worked its way south. The paranormal now it's everywhere, of course. But you're right. I mean, there's always been this uh, almost like uh, remember the old professional wrestling circuits? Oh yeah. Where you had this division and that right. division. Yep. You're absolutely correct. It, it still is like that in a lot of ways. But then you come to an event like this, and, and everybody, like uh, Greg was saying, checks the ego. We're yep. all here for the same reason, and we just enjoy the weekend. And and, and you guys going to a, a little back you know backstory, and you guys went to a high school football game, like you're saying. That is so cool. I mean, you know, we, we like to get out the places we visit. You know, we're we're not here all the time, of course. So, we on Friday nights in Texas, football's king. You know, yeah. Friday night lights. It's Friday night lights, and so yeah. that's where we are, usually are on Friday. Our, our like our kids go to the same high school. They're cheerleaders. My son plays sports there, so we're always involved with our community. So we thought it'd be cool to kind of come out and see how they do it up here in Minnesota, and it was really cool. It was it was a great game. It was a blowout. The Indians really just blew the other team out. We left about late third quarter. But the sure. actual defensive coordinator of the team was a big Ghost Lab fan. We met his daughter yesterday during the show, and uh, said, "Come on out, and check out the football game." It was it was definitely an eye opener. And you know, back home, our high school is huge. It's almost rivals a small college team. Yeah, and here yeah. it was just it was just really cool. The smallness of it. the lights were really dim, and yeah. there's sure. no band, and they got five cheerleaders on the field. It was really cool, but the kids, you can tell they were passionate about it. Yeah. The fans were really into it, and we were the only ones there wearing shorts. Wearing shorts. Yeah, yeah. But we were crazy. Those guys get weird looks showing yeah, up. Yeah, like, well, we always stop that everybody up here would, like I said, it, it's why are you bundling up? You should be used to this, yeah. but it yeah. was great. We walked over there, too. It was about two miles. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, and yeah. here, hockey is king. You go to a hockey game up here now, especially where I'm from in the Duluth area, it is rabid, and yeah. it's big, and the NHL a, people and here's, are there. Here's some trivia for you for Brad. Yeah, um, so a lot of people don't know this, but I have a very close connection to ice hockey. For years, I was a Zamboni driver. Really? Down in San Antonio, of <laughs> all places. What, what, that must have been a fun job. We have, yeah, because we had, a cent- we had a Central Hockey League a CHL team, and then we had an sure. AHL team, which was the farm club of the Phoenix Coyotes. Okay. And uh, so, you know, I happened to get the job one time, and so I drove a Zamboni for, God, 10 years probably. Yeah. Skated on the ice with Wayne Gresk. I actually, I actually played a little hockey. I, t- I picked it up as I was... Learning, so it's like you know, I yeah. learn this stuff and get around it. And I pick yeah. up other things. So through almost osmosis. Yeah, and this yeah, is from San Antonio, so you don't have hear many uh, Zamboni drivers from San Antonio. That's awesome. What is uh, going back a little bit to the paranormal? What is uh, what's your methodology? Would you start investigating? What is it that you're really like? Where do you start? Where you know the the one thing that we like to do is we don't like to hear a lot of the. A lot of the, claims. the the claims and the pre stories because we don't want to set a preconceived notion mm-hmm. as to what we're trying to find. Um, we like to go into a place and just scout. Originally, we go in, almost just sniff around, you know, run recorders, do, you know, f- go to places that feel a little heavy, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. and then see if we get anything. And based on what we got, what it said, what the picture, whatever the case may be. What, are the, what are, was the environment like at the time to, to sure. hypothesize what it could be and how we could get more of it? Yeah. And then we go back another time or a second time, second wave, and 
experiment and start hitting on that sort. So the methodology sure. is, is it's really the scientific method. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know yeah. Um, hypothesize, experiment, uh, conclude, hypothesize, experiment, conclude. You know, I, I really like Ghost Labs. Still do. I still watch. They, I think they're available on one of the streaming services I subscribe to. And I'll, yep. I'll flip it on and, and just because it was, it was good TV. Yep. You, flip you it know. on. Don't flip it off. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Don't flip it off. Keep it rolling. But just good stuff. And, and my biggest question is, is there a, I, I hate to use the word, comeback of Ghost Lab. Is, is there anything in the hopper you can give the listener right now? Yeah, what's the us? Remember the. They're thinking about it whether they're going to let the cat out of the bag. No, there's there's no cat. So, you know, we we've been approached many many times about doing different shows, and we've had different mm-hmm. ideas, and we pitch different ideas, whatever. But we've we've actually been told that like, well, we we don't want a show that's that's like Ghost Lab. We don't want a show that's like Ghost Lab. We want something yeah. different. Yeah. But yet. Everyone who we talked to said, "When you bring Ghost Lab back, ah, so it's gotcha. like yeah. it's the yeah. you know so what the production company or what the networks want is different than what fans want." And yeah, we're, we're asked every I mean a thousand times, you know, when's Ghost Lab coming back? Get when sick you're of back it, on TV? Yeah. It's not like we get sick of it. It's just like TV right now is not the answer for us. But we've actually had chances along the way of mm-hmm. pitching shows. We've actually had you know, unfortunately, a couple of ideas of ours. Stolen. That does that <laughs> happen shows so right now. Yeah. Use the word, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that does happen. Not necessarily, you know, the idea because when you pitch an idea, you really have no ownership of it, yeah. and a lot of times ideas are taken elsewhere. You might say it in passing to somebody, and right. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Next thing you know, there it is, and I, I totally get that. And so we actually, uh, with strange curiosity, about a year ago, I guess we came out with the idea of called GL Revolution. The GL stands for Ghost Lab. We used the word, the, the abbreviation GL. But we, Strange Curiosity Season 1 was doing so well that we said, hey, let's just scratch the GL Revolution name. Let's just call it Strange Curiosity Season 2. Mm. And so the na- we, we didn't want to bounce around all these different names. We want to stick with one thing. So yeah. Strange Curiosity is it. That's where, that's where you can see the Kling Brothers. And we do, we do our things just like we do in Ghost Lab on Strange Curiosity. Sure. What is, um, what is the favorite uh, device that you would use when you investigate um, Could be your mind for all. Uh, I know. Yeah, you know, is is it's your your senses are always you know the the best device a lot yeah. of times. But uh, if, you're, if you're actually talking about a gadget, it's something that you do not see people using, and I don't know why because we use it all the time on Ghost Lab. We use it time now. Are data loggers, mm. EMF temperature, sure, you know, data loggers because sure. you you can't just that's like finding a needle in a haystack when you're walking around. If you had a bunch of them and you laid it out and you took a reading every two seconds over a long period of time. You're finding out what the environment is truly like, EMF temperature speaking. Right. You know, you can find the anomalies, and and I don't, you know, I'm not saying that that that's the end all be all, but I'm saying it works for us. It's a nice roadmap to. I it's mean, a it nice really, roadmap. Yeah. We found really cool stuff, but we don't find a lot of people employ the the data logging mm-hmm. technique. So, because that's kind of like giving a bit of a baseline, right? I mean. Or at least gives you the information of what's going it's on. It gives you a long-term baseline. Yeah. So, like, yeah. say I walk in a house and I have an EMF detector, and I walk around, I'm poking around. I might leave this area and go over here, and now there's an EMF oh, spike over there. Spike. Yeah. And I wasn't I there to check it because I got it in my hand. Yeah. Our data yeah. loggers, they stay there for 24 hours or longer. Yeah. They yeah. take readings. Because it's every, just constant. You develop software. Brad did. The, we download these things, and it shows a graph over 24 hours that where is. spikes were, where spikes weren't. And so it gives us – we've yeah. actually gone back and – found spikes and in that spike we found an EVP. So it, it's 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 vital to us to have a data logger. That's fantastic. That it really is. Yeah. You know, data loggers. It's I mean, a great bit wrong. of advice actually. Yeah, that yeah. is. I mean it's the surveillance all the time there. I mean it's the unblinking Yeah, and, and we've worked with there's um there's a group down in Texas uh, um uh wow. what's the website? Anyway. They make the Eddie pluses. Sure. Um, sure. Syntex syntexparanormal.com and we've worked with them on developing a, a data logger that's available for where you put an SD card in it. It'll read over time yeah. and built the software within the device Man, itself. Man, that is so cool. So, I you, love, so it comes out on the, on the SD card I, itself. I wish we had more time. Unfortunately, this segment, we, we're actually having uh, Porter and Smith coming right. next right now. 
I'd love to have you both on for a proper show. I'd like to get into all that. A lot have your people there. call our people. Yeah, absolutely. We'll I'll give you one of my cards. <laughs> and your people is you and our people is us. So. Uh, that's the way I like to do business is directly. Definitely come back on. Love to have you guys back on the show to talk theory. And let's get deeper into that whole subject matter of how it works and nuts and bolts. I love that. And so, all right. Well, hey, thanks for your time. Hey, and Thank uh, you so much for coming on. All right. Thank Brad you. and Barry Kling, they, they are class acts and, uh, man, strange curiosity. Get the DVD, watch the footage. You're going to love it. We'll be right back right after this. Listening to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what skills. This is Jen McGowan, founder of Wayward Souls Promotions, a company dedicated to helping individuals, teams, radio shows, and others that are seeking exposure for their individual events, conventions, and shows. We offer a wide variety of advertising, such as web-based article, social media posts, podcast advertisement, and so on. Contact us at paranormalpromotion at gmail.com, visit us on Facebook at Wayward Souls Promotions, and visit our website at www.waywardsoulspromotions.com. In 1999, The Exorcist was voted the scariest movie of all time. Your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. Entertainment Weekly calls it the most viscerally harrowing movie ever made. That thing that scares isn't my daughter. The most electrifying movie of the 20th century is now coming back to theaters. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Author William Peter Blatty and director William Friedkin have created an expanded, thrilling new version of The Exorcist with footage that has never been seen before. She needs a priest. (laughs) Don't miss The Exorcist in the version you've never seen. Possessing theaters everywhere. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. You're listening to After Hours AM Deeper Cuts. Cutting deep into what skills. Back to After Hours AM, everybody. Deeper Cuts Edition. We are live here, of course, 2017 Paracon, Shooting Star Casino, yep. Minoman. And we're sitting down here with two of the members of Tennessee Wraith Chasers, Porter and Smith. Yeah, Chris, what's up? Oh, Chris. Okay, here, let, let's turn that thing on. There it is. Okay. Now, now Sorry. you know, the whole last interview. I'm the blonde. I, I, I called Scott and Scott instead <laughs> I, of Porter. Would you guys prefer last names or first names during your interviews? Well, I think Porter's always Porter on the show, and I'm always Chris. Yeah. I don't yeah, know why that we is just that, always call him yeah, Porter. Yeah, 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 if you yeah. call me Scott, I don't think anybody's going to listen to it. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, uh, now he's live, so he might just go, boom, punch me in the face. Yeah, you've got to be know, careful about that. I mean, and if you call a, me it's Smith, it's just going to match up with the other quadrillion. Yeah, well, that is true. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that is true there, Chris. I, I get it. <clears throat> Porter and Chris here with us. Of course, you guys came in to the Paracon, kind of a last-minute thing. You guys are hanging out where? Down, down south somewhere. Got the call. You guys yeah. both look tired. Oh, man, we were beat. We had actually just got through doing a lecture at uh, the University of Central Arkansas. Uh, got the call that said they were trying to work it out. And uh, about midnight that night, they said, no, go ahead, go back to Nashville, go home. You're, you're, you're good. 
Uh, so the next morning, we jumped on the plane, landed in Dallas. The phone rang. It said, don't unpack. You're headed up north. <laughs> <laughs> we had just enough time to do and some believe laundry. And my surprise, sitting in the casino area, here he comes walking. Porter comes walking <laughs> yeah. up. I'm like, wow, they'll let anyone in this thing. I'm telling you, no, it was a nice surprise. <laughs> so, we just talked to him the other day. Yeah, how do you keep it? How do you keep it fresh in a sense? In terms of like you're on a whirlwind, and then you're coming here, and you need to be on, and you right. need to be. I mean, how? What? What do you do? What Stay do you caffeinated. Do? <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> tons of caffeine. I mean, yeah, you, you've got to try to squeeze the sleep in there sometime. You know, yeah. you got to rest. But I, I think that you're, you know, us we're adrenaline junkies anyway. So sure. you know, we're always constantly on that rush. We're always on that high. You know, we love our fans. We love meeting people and getting out and interacting, talking about the show, and and just you know, really hearing the stories that everybody else has too. You know, I mean, that's one thing that really keeps you going, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, I, I always say uh, for our, our table and stuff is like that's that's the fun thing is hearing other people's stories because you can always learn from anybody. Yep. There, there is no Absolutely. experts. Yeah. Yeah. You just you hit it right on the head right there. I mean, that's the thing. There, there's no expert in the field. You know, no. I mean, it's it's all still we're all still learning, uh, you know, and we all have a different viewpoint. And, you know, I don't think you can sit here and say that anyone's wrong. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's it's we all have experiences that we can't explain and we all have theories and you know we can learn from each other and yep. hopefully someday figure something out you know that's great i agree and you're the historian we talked about that on the show when you right. were on yeah and, and, and chris you, you're what would your specialty be in the group if, if someone had to pin you down what what, what is yours oh uh, i don't know the asshole um. oh <laughs> hey, hey well, he, he didn't say that he didn't say that <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I, I did found the group, so I mean, I guess that counts. Oh, for you something. did? Yeah. Oh, interesting. How did right. that happen? And and I kind of knew you did. I wanted to bring that question about. Um, is, is well, how did that form, and how did you end up with a TV show out of the whole thing? Well, I just did this a little bit ago with the <laughs> those those other girls from the press. So I'm going to general generalize it for you. I had my first paranormal encounter when I was 25. Uh, you know, I had a lot of questions rolling around after I had seen that. I had never thought about paranormal until I had that experience. You know, I was a skeptic. Uh, so I just started going out to cemeteries, abandoned places, by myself, digital recorder. I think just pretty much everybody kind of starts out like that. Uh, then I got uh, chosen to be on a show called uh, Ghost Hunters Academy with Stephen Tango back in 2009. Uh, really had a good time with those guys. They said, go back home, join a group. Uh, you know, I just started looking around, and I didn't really find anybody that I felt like I meshed with. So, you know, I yeah. thought, you know, let's just, I'm going to start my own. And, you know, found mm-hmm. a couple of good old boys just like me. Uh, you know, we did a sizzle reel with Tremendous Entertainment, uh, sold that to Animal Planet, did a pilot. Uh, then we did Ghost Asylum, did three great seasons of that with Destination America. Yep. Now here we are with Haunted Towns. Yeah, and it has been just burning up the charts. As I said earlier, uh, this show partners a lot with Destination America. I mean, in fact, we have Nick on all the time. We have Katrina on all the time. Uh, and then, of course, just the other night, we had Adam and Amy on. Oh, you right. know, So it's been a, a big, great partnership with this show and that. But I've been watching and when I'm talking with them. It's getting harder and harder to get interviews of you guys now because, you know, in the beginning it was like, oh, yeah, we'll give you the wraith chasers. Oh, come on. Now <laughs> it's you've got to put in a request like a yeah. month ahead of time. So that's usually a great indicator of how popular, how well people have accepted you guys. Right on. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, trying to find time to squeeze things in, you know, because you know, like just like this week, you know, we're running from airport to airport oh, yeah. and trying to get stuff done. It's like you just don't have time. You you have to have a moment of downtime to, you know, just to breathe and say hi to the family and move on down the road. Yeah, but I mean, it's very humbling. I mean, to be able to do this is such a great blessing, uh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of in your day job doing your day-to-day, and then all of a sudden this happens, and then you're traveling the country. You know, we're getting to go to Hawaii. We're getting to come hang out with you guys up here. Never been to Minnesota before. So, you know, it's just a really fun job. you got to stay longer next time. Yeah. Yes. We'd love to. It's a great (laughs) place. We'd love to bring the other guys next time. Well, you know, you got to go to where the Great Lakes are. We're on oh, Lake right up your area, yeah. and it's beautiful, right oh, next yeah. to Lake Superior, and yeah. it, it's just really phenomenal. I hear, I hear the fishing's good. Over oh there my too. lord, <laughs> man! I'm telling you, thirty pound northerns are not Ooh, uncommon. So I mean, wow, a common yeah. sight. Yeah. But uh, you know, you guys travel a lot. You, it's been a whirlwind the last few years, and, and of course, you did the Ghost Hunters Academy. We just had uh, we just had um, Grant on, yep. like what two hours ago. Yep. And, yeah, he was even talking about the explosion of this. Yeah. Did this shock you guys when you're like, wow, people actually get TV shows, you know, you know before the big hit happened, going, really? I can get on TV doing this? Mm-hmm. And, and, and how shocking is it today to go, go to cons like this and just see like-minded people? It's wonderful. 
it's it's been an explosion. Yeah. I mean, before you know, when we first started, and even before, uh, you know, I think it's kind of become streamlined now. There's so many people out there yeah. with experiences, and I think all these shows, you know, all these great shows like Ghost Hunters and you know, uh, Ghost Adventures, and then Amy and uh, Adam and all those guys. I think, and the, even the Ghost Brothers. You know, people are starting to sure. get more comfortable with the paranormal because they see these TV yeah. shows. Yeah. And then they're like, well, I've had experiences. So then they come to the cons. They get to share their stories with us. I mean, it's just it's a big family, you know. Mm-hmm. How do you think, because um, you were bringing up all these great shows, and there seems to be a wealth of them. You know, there seem to be more and more good shows coming out. How do you do you think that it's like that fever is plateauing or do you think it's, get, it's getting more popular? Well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it, it, you started out with, with one show in the beginning, yep. and, you know, and so everybody gravitated there. And so you, you, you have to understand your, your viewing audience, you know, and everybody out there. People have varying opinions, so they're going to gravitate to, to, to the show that, that more closely, you know, uh, coincides or goes along with how they sure. feel. And, and that's where they're going to gravitate to. You know, they, there are some people who are going to look across the board and say, okay, well, let me see what these guys have to say and view that. But I think if you've got all these shows out there and that it's, it's come up, and, of course, you know, people are starting to become more comfortable with the concept of that there is something else out there, some, there's something else for discovery, uh, that I think that it, it's, you're going to see it continue to come on up. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I don't think we've reached that, that pinnacle yet. Uh, I think it's, it's like there's a, there's a little ledge, but I think we're going to see some more upward growth as it goes forward. I think we're going to see the field get pushed further, too. I mean, we just had yeah. Swanee on. Um, yeah, Swanee was, yeah. You, you know, yeah. and he was talking about doing wonderful things with technology oh. to make it where, you know, ultimately what we'd all like is a camera directly to the dead where we could shine a camera on them, and then there they are. We can converse right. real time back and forth. We have an interviews uh, with the with the ghosts instead of us. Then yeah, <laughs> we'd have them. We'd have Abraham Lincoln, and George Washington there you the go. chairs. Then we wouldn't have a job anymore. Well, well, I was gonna, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's actually an interesting question. It's like if there was a way, like a definitive way, to start connecting with spirits, would you, would a little bit of you be kind of like? But that's the fun part is the investigation. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's Definitely. Like the discovery out of it. You know, right. The, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of the thrill ride of it, isn't yeah. it? I mean, the unknown. Uh, you know, there's no facts. It's all theoretical. Once we have our facts, it's just going to kind of be like, well, what do we do now? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. You guys are absolutely correct because then it's then it's no longer there. The right. discovery, the, the fun, the, the uncovering, like we talked when you were on the show, yeah. uncovering the history. Oh, my God. That, you know, you know, that gets unmasked because you dug right. and, and how, how you go, oh, my Lord, that is shocking and yeah. amazing and sometimes scary yeah. all at once. Right, it's kind of like a scary movie. Yeah. You know, when they tease it through the whole movie, you don't get to see you exactly what's going on. But then once you see it, you're like, oh, the movie's about over now. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the monster tease, or you know? not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. It's like, like, for example, like Last Jedi, Star Wars. Right. You know, you're seeing all these great you know, images and stuff, but come December 17th or whenever it is, you'll have seen it, and now you, there's, it's that's gone. It's, it's gone. done. That's yeah. it. That's it. I mean, yeah, I think that... As, as we're going into this field and as we're finding new ways to do what we're doing, I, I don't know that we'll ever completely unravel that, that whole fabric that's there. I just don't mm-hmm. know that we will have that ability. But I think we'll get close to some answers, and I think we'll get close to understanding things because throughout time we, have we've, as a society, have become more educated and we have been able to diverge away from uh, the, the mystical concepts that we use to explain certain scientific facts. Mm-hmm. And so as our science expands and as we become more in tune with those things, you know, we'll be able to explain other things away. Yeah. It, so. It's an interesting question that you raise, and I, I, and I might be completely wrong here, but I would assume both of you would be more on the tech, scientific side of the, of the coin of paranormal investigating. Mm-hmm. And you do wonder if, if we are ever to get to that answer, right, of what's going on, is it our metaphysical side that's going to get us there, or is it going to be the technical side? Right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't. I don't know. I, yeah. I really don't know. I think we're a little bit of both. You know, we're yeah. all Christian guys, sure. So there's yeah. a spiritual aspect. That's what, what I want to bring up. We're, we're Christians as well, and that's, that's uh, for a lot of investigators. That is a conflict sometimes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, because we just had uh, Reverend Neil Farley on talking about paranormal and Christianity and yeah. how the two can actually coexist mm-hmm. as long as you have a strong foundation yeah, of spirituality. Absolutely. And that was refreshing to hear it, him say that. It is. I, I can't tell you how difficult it has been to get into certain areas because 
because of I like I, my background is Catholicism, and you know going to there, it's not even a Catholic church. The one place I'm thinking of is just like the schoolhouse adjacent to it. And I asked a couple times. I offered a very nice uh, contribution to the church. Just let, just let me in, look around. This you, is what you I offered them cash. I did Cold offer them. Cash. I, offered them <laughs> I, I bribed them, and I thought if anything's going to work, that works. They're literally like. We know what you are, and we don't we want you there. You yeah. we, we know what you are. Yeah. We, here. We, we know what you are, and we don't like you. <laughs> oh, wow. Which I get off and actually. You, you, do, you know, that's <laughs> Nothing funny. to do with you know, Catholicism. That, that happens, <laughs> so you know, he's not wrong. It happens more than you realize. Yeah. People yeah. don't like him. No, but, yeah. nothing, not much to like, no, really. People love Greg. <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside. Uh, you know, he just pops up like a prom night pimple once in a while. But you know, go ready to be popped. Yeah, that's a little inside joke between me and Porter. Oh, Last yeah, time yeah. he was on the show, oh, we, were, we were talking, and I said, "Yeah, this show is everywhere." You know, you, uh, we pop up like a prom night pimple. I mean, we're <laughs> just there. Boy, you there. two with your inside jokes. You guys want a room or something? No, no we're good. We'll yeah. go we're not, we talk. don't know that. <laughs> we don't know each other that well. But, you know, talking about the show, eh, really, I love the show. I mean, I watch a lot of these shows, and some of them are like, eh, you know, not my cup of tea. But yours has always had that cool angle, great investigations, and even better people. Well, thank Top-notch you. Top-notch people. Thank you so thank much. You so and much. that's what brings it in. Yeah. And, and, and you guys are relatable. You, you know, some of these shows you're watching, you're like, what the hell's wrong with these people? Right. You, 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 know, and, and, you know, some of these want to be up in starters right. that they send us a lot of YouTube links. Watch my show. It's great. Yeah. Plus, yeah. plus, uh, at least Ghost Asylum, I'm assuming the new show is uh, produced by a company that started in Minnesota. Yep. Tremendous. Yep. Yep. Uh, Col- Colleen Needles, who used to be a news anchor on WCCO right TV, on. She, she started that place up. And what? wow, look at where that went to. Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous cow. entertainment has really took off. It's been a great partnership with those guys. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, we love them. And, you know, it, it's, they're, they're be great to work with, you know. And, yeah. and, of course, us. You know, I mean, we're just, you know, like you were talking about, you know, being relatable. I mean, we're just plain old guys, you know. Yeah. We, I tell everybody all the time, we're plain as dirt, you know. We're not yeah. we're not nothing special. We get up yeah. in the morning and put they, our pants on the same way everybody else does. They, could, they couldn't change us if they tried. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I grew up on a farm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Northern Minnesota, cow farm. That's and it. So it's the same, same mentality. There's always Even core today. values, there, right? There, there is. That's like it. Like yeah. you, you have your own core yep. values. Yep. You know, growing up in the nor- northeast of yep. uh, St. Paul. Uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis, yep. where, where Green Belt is. It's so yep. blue collar yep. area. Yep. So, you came know. Over, my uh, family came over on the boat. So, yeah. Yeah, hardworking yeah. folks. And, you know, you just can't take that away. But we got to talk about the rest of the team. Yes. You know, we have Chris here. We have Porter here. Yep. How about the rest? I mean, you guys got a great team going on there. Thank you. I mean, I think we have some diversity there. I, I would agree. You, you know, know uh, we got Doogie. He uh, kind of helped co found the team. He, you know, he's kind of our. Uh, our Magnet when it comes mm-hmm. to the paranormal. It seems like he's a little more sensitive to things. Uh, he's probably the biggest believer out of all of us because he's had the most paranormal yeah. experiences out of any of us. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you got Brandon. He's our mm-hmm. biggest skeptic. He's mm-hmm. all about the science. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he sees a shadow, it'll turn into, I just, saw, I just saw a shadow. Then about five minutes later, he'll be like, well... I think I saw a shadow. Uh, yeah, I, I like that about him. Before yeah, the um, end of the night, yeah. like, you know what? I don't yeah, think I, I saw think it. Like, and then, of course, you guys employ something I've never seen done before, and that's traps. Yeah. yeah. You, that, that, you know, when I first heard about it, uh, a couple people came up to me. Well, there's this group, and, and they're all Tennessee, and they, and they have this trap. Well, that, that word, figure, see, I think that word is kind of a, it's we, a misnomer. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm yeah. like, what? And, and so... You know, I, I got to know you guys, talk yeah. to you guys, and, and realize it's a really good damn trigger object is yeah. what it is. You know, I mean, And our intention was never to trap. We used that word, uh, and I don't think we should have ever used it. Uh, yeah, but you know. I think it's more of a transportation device is what we were trying to do. See if there was some way we could contain the energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because theoretically these things produce energy. They're made of energy. So we're like, well, hey, why can we not try to contain it and see if we can help them get out of that you know, building because they seem to be trapped. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I think it kind of got blown out of proportion with that word trap. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Chris, it got my attention. Guys like me, radio guys, yep. I mean, people in the media. So I'd use the word, too. I yeah. really oh, would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, you know, to be completely honest with you guys, it, it, it brings more people to the paranormal that way. Right. When you have words like that that might be trigger words to make people want to come in and check yeah. it out out of curiosity. And it's an opportunity to, for learning at that point. 
Yeah. So, you know, I don't begrudge you at all. So you say I want to use – I get where you're going. I really do. Yeah. But really look at all the people you've taught and on all the t- people you've touched because you're yeah. able to be, right. do what you're doing. Uh, you know, it's like those things happen. You know, it's 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 those unintended consequences that that come out of it, and sometimes those things are really good consequences. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and it's 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 it was neat for us. You know, we're referring to it as traps, and of course, in the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times, all called us the modern day Ghostbusters, and that was you know when all the Ghostbuster hype was coming out. So it's kind of fun, you know, to yeah, ride yeah. the wave. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and you, you know, know, but but the whole concept, like you said, it was you know it was a whole energy, you know, and and trying to move that energy. So. Yeah. Well, I see what you guys do, and, and, and yeah, you. I'm going to use quotations here. No one can see it. Traps. Right. To, to get these uh, spirits engaged with what you're doing. You take them back. You, you, you monitor the, the device to right. see what kind of activity is going on. Absolutely. Man, that's smart. That is smart. Yeah, and you know we we've done over what thirty episodes, thirty something episodes of Ghost uh, Asylum. Uh, thirty, yeah, thirty, thirty-two, ooh, thirty-one, thirty-two. It's like over that. thirty. Yeah, it's over thirty. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little while. So that's over thirty uh, transportation devices, traps, whatever there you want to call them. We like to tra- yeah, let's transportation. call it a transportation device, a bus for the dead. It's a paranormal taxi. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Or there a is. modern day paranormal Uber. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There tra- it is. Trap is too Ghostbustery. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, you know, and out of those 30 some odd traps or transportation devices, two of them actually seem to work mm-hmm. for at least a short amount of time. When we did the, the pilot episode, Ghostland, Tennessee, there was something that we were able to contain in that devil's toy box. Yeah. You know, we were able to kind of substantiate that with our meters. Uh, something was definitely going on in there. So and, the one thing I've always wondered with, with the episode that seen is like, you know, you go to a location, you check it out, then you decide to build uh, what you're, whatever you're going to make. Is it literally like that, where you're you're making it on the on the fly at the location, or you're planning ahead of time, kind of what you are hoping to, what concept you're hoping to create for this? You know, I think what you do is you 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 research the location, and you kind you kind of have that idea, and so you want to try to be prepared for that. Sure, uh, you can't always be prepared for what you're going to put together or what's going to mm. what's going to transpire once you get started doing mm. it. You know, I mean, you get there and you're like, okay, well, we wanted to do this, but we can't do that because we don't have that material, we don't have this you know, sure. this item. So we have to transition to somewhere else, and so it's it's always fluid. And then yeah. at the yeah. end, you know what what turns out may not look exactly <laughs> like what you thought you were going to do because cause you're getting some of the material on location, right? Right, right. Yeah. absolutely. Right. And then there are some, you know, Brandon uh, and Chasey always had a list of things they wanted to try. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, there would be some circumstances where we'd get to that case and be like, "Hey, this is the perfect one for that thing we wanted to do," kind yeah. of thing, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, we watch it, the show, and, and really, what it is is a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Really, at the end of the day, for me, for education, because you guys yeah. have brought up some great points. One thing that shocked me when you guys are doing it in a good way was spirituality. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. never hear, yeah. you hear very rarely spirituality as in, as in Christianity. Right, yeah. In pe- the paranormal. And a lot of people would say, well, that doesn't make good bedfellows. <laughs> but but, I, but I, I really commended you guys for, you know, not compromising your own yeah. morals. Or a lot of people would be like, hey, I'm on TV now. Yeah. Screw it. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. Well, so the, just want to give you guys kudos for well, that. That's the thing. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're firm in our belief and firm in our faith. And, but, you know, we don't look at anybody else and say, hey, you're wrong. Right. You know, we, we look at it and say, we want to learn from you, learn what you're thinking. You know, what is it that, that makes you feel that way and believe that way? And, and show me the evidence of the things that you do. So, uh, you know, we're, we're open to that, but we still hold strong to their faith on the other side. You know, that, that being said, I, I, I got to ask this. What was it like, Porter, when Chris came up to you and you said, I want to join the Wraith Chasers? I mean, how did that <laughs> union come about? What, what were you doing when that happened? Were you already in a group? Or what, what was going on? You, you know, what's funny about that is that uh, it was, Doogie was the one who first approached me there. Uh, you know, we were, um, I was, you know, working the day job, you know, sitting there, and I saw these, uh, I saw Doogie posted something about the team. And, of course, Doogie and I had hung out at his house and, you know, we'd sit there and watch Ghost Hunters and, and then watch the stuff going in his house and talk about how we needed to get, you know, cameras set up and try to catch that stuff and show everybody, and it never happened. And then when I saw these guys doing that, I was like, man, you know, now you're actually doing it. And I was like, you know, I, yeah, I, I would love to come along for the ride. And uh, and so, uh, yeah, well, I jumped in, and, of course, my background being business and stuff, it was kind of a good fit. And sure. Doogie's background, just he's he's like the, he was a social butterfly then and, yep. and was able to really, you know, make those connection with the clients. And then we just we brought it from – uh, you know, being that, that idea that Chris had and, and bring it to fruition and, and then make it a, a legitimate type of business out of it and, yeah. and taking cases and, and turning it evidence. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, it's amazing to see how far it's all gone. 
I mean, I, it, you have to just be like, I can't believe this to a certain degree, right? But where's it going, though? I like to know their, yeah. their idea of where this crazy thing's going. Hopefully out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> an international like go. sort of going to other countries. Yeah, and I, I mean, the yeah. field. Where, where, do you, where do you guys envision? We've asked everybody pretty much this afternoon. Yeah, that we did. Where do you envision this, this field of the paranormal stopping next? What do you think, in your opinion? And, of course, we're not going to hold you to it, but because no one knows, what's going to be the next big discovery? Uh, what's going to bust this thing wide open? You know, you think about it, and, and you think about the, the connection of the spiritualism and spirituality and our, our, in, our internal ability to be able to communicate. You know, we believe that our bodies are some of our, our finest tools for the business. The problem is, is you have, you have trouble corroborating that and being able to transition that information to somebody else and it be infallible. Uh, so I think the, the combination of technology and being able to record that and the feelings that you have and being able to exhibit the changes in, in those feelings and that, that electrical uh, interaction that your body has with these entities may be one thing that might pull it all together. That's great. Yeah, and I was just having a conversation with Grant last night over dinner. Um, I think something important to remember, too, is when you're out here investigating, I think the most important thing to you as an individual is your personal experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, the gadgets are cool and all the technology, I mean, because that helps to substantiate the evidence for other people. But when it comes down to it, it's between you and the whatever it is yeah, we're dealing with. Yeah, that's a good point because <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, Barry Taft and I, we're, we're good friends, Dr. Barry Taft, and he says, you know, Christmas trees made – evidence we would all we wouldn't have any question anymore yep. what it is right and, and he, he and of course i stopped for a second like what yeah yeah these gadgets are great but are we any closer than where i was during the san pedro case right. to understanding it or yeah. or any other case i was on he says i want to say we, we're, we have a better glimpse through science what we think is going on Right, but but he believes you know I'm not gonna put words in his mouth, but he believes it's gonna come you know through science, of course. That's right. how it's gonna happen. Are we ever going to have that a definitive camcorder to the dead? I don't see that anytime soon because <laughs> yeah. it would be awesome. Are those glasses like on 13? <laughs> <years? laughs> yep, exactly. Oh, Chris, oh, come on, man, right in my wheelhouse. They're talking horror movies. You got the juggernaut in the box, right? <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, the in the bath. <laughs> the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, this is a different show all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, adult or it's a really horror quick. movie. Uh, there you go. You know, and uh, you know, generally, you guys are here, new to the con, and I'm gonna actually. Do any of you guys have any questions for for the Wraith Chasers? Because no, there's no <laughs> questions from the audience at all. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, where are we going next? I mean, it's always dangerous to open it up to the it crowd. It really anyway. is. You never so, know what's going to come out You just never know. At least when they call <laughs> in, we have an idea what's going to happen. Right. You, you know, but uh, no, this has been really interesting. You know, when you guys got the call, you guys came in. Again, we alluded yeah. to it. And I was actually really pleased to see you guys a part of this. Well, thank you. Thank We're you glad so to be here. Yeah. 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 I, I knew you guys would bring just really what you guys do, a different flavor of things. Yeah. And I mean, not to say... You know, God bless his soul, Zach Baggins. He just, you know, as we PR'd it all week, circumstances beyond his own control, and that happens. Yeah, it happens. Then it opens it happens up, sometimes. Then it opens up opportunities for other folks that, are, right. that you know, that might not have had that opportunity. Exactly. So, yep. you know. Next time you just have to be here for the entire convention. We'd love to. Yes. Yeah. And like I said, maybe yep. next year we can bring the other guys. Yep, bring, yeah, bring I love that. Else. I love that. We'll take you guys fishing, though. <laughs> yeah. You, you had I known, because we talked about fishing <laughs> the last time you were on. Had I known, I would have grabbed some fishing rods. And oh, we man. We would have went fun. and nailed some walleyes oh, or something. heck yeah. I know Mike would love that. Oh, Mike you would know? love that. So, yeah, yeah Tennessee Wraith Chasers. we got Chris. we got Porter. It's been an absolute pleasure to have yep. you both on. Pleasure's on. we got to get running, man. And, yep. uh, you know, really, quite honestly, that we're starting to wind down. This is it. And we'll be right back right after this, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> after hours a.m. and if you're listening to us via podcast make sure you like us follow us review us tell your friends about us tell grandma about us and keep listening this is jen mcgowan founder of wayward souls promotions a company dedicated to helping individuals teams radio shows and others that are seeking exposure for the individual events 
conventions and shows. We offer a wide variety of advertising, such as web-based article, social media posts, podcast advertisement, and so on. Contact us at paranormalpromotion at gmail.com, visit us on Facebook at Wayward Souls Promotions, and visit our website at www.waywardsoulspromotions.com. Hi, Tom Bodette. If pop culture is to be believed, roughly 40% of all people are actually vampires or dating one. Well, undead or not, you can always save on a clean, comfortable room at Motel 6, even if you sleep during the day because direct sunlight turns you into a pile of sparkly coffee grounds. Speaking of which, we have free coffee every morning. You day sleepers may want to go for the decaf. I'm Tom Bodette, and we'll leave the light on for you. Book online at motel6.com. Author Steve Asher brings us Hauntings of Trilogy. Steve's first book, Hauntings of the Kentucky State Penitentiary. This first installment of the trilogy tells us the tale of the Kentucky State Penitentiary and why it's so... And welcome back to After Hours AM, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis. Right along with me, as always, is Mr. Greg Bakken. Hey, Greg. Man, we are over here at Paracon. It's winding down. Yes. And it's been a smash hit. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the day, and we got, you know, really the people that are the engine that drives this thing with us right here. Yes, we do. And who are, who are we talking with? Like, guys, turn on your microphones. Introduce yourselves to the group. Well, hello. I'm Lindsay Center with Center Stage Events. And I'm Mark Tetlow with Ideal Event Management. Now, Mark, I, I, we've known each other years because we've dealt with each other through radio and stuff. Many and times, uh, yes. and so that's really been a, a, a fun time meeting everybody here. And that's the thing with Paracon is it's, it's like a big community getting together. It's not just a uh, – it's a very intimate feel. Yep. And some of your bigger cons, like we've gone to rock and roll cons, mm -hmm. where, where you go up there and you're maybe – 30 feet away from your rock star, and you have to scream, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Here, you can go meet, like, Grant Wilson, shake his hand. You can meet Jason Hawes, shake his hand. How is a Paracon like this differ from other events around the nation? A uh, Paracon like this is, you know, they, they don't hold back. They stack the, the card, bring in the best of the best in the field, um, who's most popular on TV, and some of the you know, best local teams as well. But it's like you said, you get to go up, meet them, you know, there's no divide. You know, we all hang out afterwards. We all go out, have dinner, you know, have a few drinks, um, sit around, socialize, and, you know, meet everybody and have a good time. And, you know, we do things like Dragon Con where there's 70,000 people. We don't get the opportunity to meet the fans here or mm -hmm. places like that. But here, you know, there's it's a manageable number. You know, about 2,500 people show up every year faithfully. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of familiar faces along as well, a lot of new ones. And that's great to meet them. Well, what was great about it is, like, even after the events are done for the day, you go down to the bar, for instance, one of the lounges mm -hmm. here at the Shooting Star, and you can have a beer with those guys or BS to those guys or get to talk with those guys. A lot of events I've gone to, especially national events like radio events mm -hmm. and rock and roll events, they go back to their dressing rooms. They don't come out. They don't come out and socialize. They're done. They go back to their dressing rooms. I say, see you later. Not with these conventions. Is this, the, is this primarily what people can expect from most paranormal conventions, or is this a little more intimate even than most? Uh, that's kind of a double-edged question. A lot of uh, conventions, our people, like mine and Lindsay's that we work with, will always go out of their way to meet the fans, hang out with them. You know, it's not like they, don't, they hate to consider themselves celebrities. They don't oh, yeah. think of themselves that way. And they're just like me and you, and they'll sit there, and you were with us the other night. Um, they'll sit there and talk with us and have beers and relax and, you know, just, you know, shoot the breeze with them. So, wh Mark, what do you look for when you add clients to your roster? What is it that, you, that really s needs to stand out from, for people? Uh, something unique and different than not being done. And we'll get calls once a week from a group that says, I was just on my ghost story, so I need representation. And we want to be on TV. And those are like the two biggest red flags I see. And usually we, we don't even have you know, a phone call. Um, they get that email saying, you know, thanks, but we're, we're full. Um, but it's got to be different. And everybody here, all the shows here that represent it are different, uh, every single one of them. There's something different about them. When when you have when when you're looking for people and you have these all these shows now there's so many shows out there is that a is that a blessing 
and a curse when it comes to bringing on new people because, like you said, I, I can only imagine there's somebody who is just like, I shot a home video. I should I should uh, be represented. <laughs> Want to see it, Mark? It's a little blue, but hey. And it's over there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was taking place in our bedroom. Hey, you want to watch that video? It, it can be a little overwhelming, but with some of the new shows, um, like the, the reality shows, not the the docudrama shows like Most Haunted, and, or not Most Haunted, I'm sorry, um, my haunted house yeah. um, and those type of shows where it's just they do the you know the local team comes in and presents her stuff and you know it's a one off. You know the real shows that have that are episodic, same characters from beginning to end. Um, that's what we're, we look at. You know the different characters, how the fans like them and respond to them, how they are to the fans is most important yeah. as well. As you can see, everybody that we work with was out with us. Uh, you know, on the floor with meeting everybody they could. And we went past our time yesterday in the halls just so that we could finish meeting everybody that wanted to meet everyone. So, Yeah. And that's something that I've noticed, like, again, getting back to how intimate and how nice mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, I mean, like, for instance, I've known Scott Porter for years, right? And, uh, you know, of course, we rib each other a little bit. I'm like, ah, they'll let anyone to this event now. But, you know, that's how warm it is. You know, everyone's friends and everyone gets to know each other and it becomes a big meet and greet. A lot of these people haven't seen each other since last year. If not longer. Yeah, it becomes a big uh, paranormal family reunion, if you will. And, uh, and everybody uh, seems to think that there's uh, animosity between different shows. And if, like last year, there was the rumor of the ghost adventurers and ghost hunters. There was going to be a rumble. and So we all took pictures hugging each other in the <laughs> casino and posted those. <laughs> a rumble. Oh, yeah, they were like, all doing selfies. All the ghost adventurers and ghost hunters guys were yeah. like, yeah, let's get together. <laughs> you're right, though. You're, you're right, though, because everybody... You know, even with the radio, they expect us to hate other radio guys, right? And I, we don't. We, we get along great. We go to the radio conventions. We BS with them. And we're a big, happy family. And, and same thing, you know, you lift the curtain over, you know, because everyone has these preconceived notions you should hate your competitor because they're their competitors. Or if they no. do something differently it, than you do. Exactly. So they're colleagues bad. is what they are. They're mm-hmm. colleagues, and they have the same respect for each other. Yeah. Exactly. And that's something that, you know, uh, I've known for a long time. Greg, you've known the same thing for a long time, but it's amazing how how many listeners will come up and go, oh, yeah, those two, they don't like each other. And I'm like, what two? And, and they'll go into a story about, you know, how this show doesn't like this show. And it's like, guys, they're just people it, just like you and me. They're it, not professional wrestlers up there going, hello, brother, I'm going to go ahead. No, but it does feel like that there's some, some people who want that. They want that they little want bit of that little storytelling mm-hmm. behind they the want scenes. That little bit of drama. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, what's going on? What's yeah. The scoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now, ideal management's been doing this a long time. You're, this isn't your first rodeo. This 13 years this coming February. Isn't that amazing, Mark? Do you ever look back and go, wow? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> how big it's gotten, how far you've come. And uh, really, you, you kind of started just like everybody else. How did you start, Mark? I don't think anyone really has a grasp of how Mark Teplo got into the business and how he started. Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. I used to put on events for magazines and newspapers across the country. I met uh, Jason Haas and Grant. I brought them to an event for a newspaper that wanted to do something somewhat local in New Hampshire. So they were a close drive. This was at the end of season one. So I met Jay and Grant then. And it was a little party supply store. J&J party and janitorial supply, actually. Grant remembers it. I showed him a picture of last week of it or a couple <laughs> weeks ago. When we um, and 5,000 people showed up. Sure. And uh, a couple months later, we did another thing, and Jay said, we should do more of these. And at the time, they had just let go of the, uh, the person they were working with and called me to his house and said, you know, let's have a, you know, let's have a barbecue and just started there and Two years later, I left the corporate world, and this is all I've done ever since. So it really was spawned out of friendship. Yeah. You, you know, much. and that's the most honest and best way anything begins. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Same yeah. With, with very, very crazy. cool. Just and uh, I know you, you're, you've been everywhere. I mean, you know, one, like again, it, yeah. why don't you introduce yourself to the group? Yeah, sure. And, and, uh, but really, we've seen you run around like a... Like a, 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 how would you say it? I mean, she's fast. Cra- a crazy person. Oh, okay. A cra- well, yes. Run around like a crazy person. She may person. need to be medicated. But, we, okay, we, we get that. But go ahead, introduce yourself again to the group. And the listeners. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I'm the owner of Center Stage Events. It's a paranormal talent event management company. So I just manage a bunch of very well-known faces. Some not so well-known, but um, in the paranormal community and just help them out at events and with bookings and schedule management and all that kind of stuff. So... 
Awesome. That is cool, though. I mean, how did you get into it? I mean, you know. Uh, through Grant. Through Grant, actually. I met him a few years ago, actually, here at Paracon. It was my first time meeting him. We just hit it right off, like, those people that you meet and suddenly you feel like you've known them forever. Yeah. So that's how it was for us. And just started going to events from then on with him. And he's like, you know, you're really good at what you do. Have you ever thought about, you know, starting your own company and doing this for others? And never have. So that was a, that was a scary thought to think of tackling something like that. But I did it with his motivation and help and Mark's as well. I was like, I've been bugging him for anything that I might need to know. And it just mm-hmm. kind of just grew from there. Mm-hmm. I just suddenly have a yeah. roster of people that just out well, of nowhere. We have a really large fan base of beautiful, wonderful female you know, gender that would say to my, themselves right now listening, well, what's it like to be a woman in such a male-dominated world? At least that's what it looks like from the outside looking in. Have you have you had to fight a little bit harder, or is it very accepting? I atmosphere? haven't even noticed it. <laughs> like, no, that's good to hear. Like, that that I, is good to hear. I haven't even thought about that at all. <laughs> like, well, well, listening to her talk, that's it's her personality and her mm-hmm. strength just behind her voice. I see other women, and it is a relatively male-dominated f- uh, field, and I've seen other people struggle there. She stands her ground just like anybody else would. And Aww, fights for what we need. No, you're welcome. <laughs> this is why I'm still sitting next to you. Um, <laughs> she's like one of the guys and, you know, doesn't back down. And, and so now you guys, we were talking yesterday before we came on air here. Now, Mark, your days are quote unquote numbered doing this. We, you kind of said, hey, you know, maybe another year or so. And Abigail, you're going <laughs> to. Sister Abigail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to take over for Mark. Yeah. Is that what I heard? Did I hear that correctly? That's pretty much, I mean, you always look to those that have been around and are learning and just doing great on their own. And, you know, I, at the end of 2018, I'm looking forward to not traveling every weekend and watching and reading about Lindsay doing it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason behind it, though? I mean, you're so damn good at it. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, there's, I mean, you don't have to disclose it to us. No, I it's mean, just, but uh, it afforded me other opportunities over the, you know, be 14 years by the end of 2018. Um, and we started a small production company in Florida and just going to continue to grow and grow with that. I think we're doing maybe 10 or 12 events total next year. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I won't miss the travel. Uh, I'll be looking forward to just staying in one place I used to live life on the road for radio. Mm-hmm. And I do not miss that at all, to be honest with you. I mean, it was a tough few years and it's like, oh. You know, you, you never truly settle in when you're living out of a suitcase. Never. And I, I, I mean, Lindsay's kind of getting used to that now. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm soaking it up while I can because I know that day will eventually come that I'm going to hate traveling, but I love it right now. How many events have you been doing then per year uh, since getting into this and, and getting, uh, getting uh, more clientele? under you well i don't actually do events like mark does as of right now i don't do my own i just kind of manage everybody yeah. i'm with them at their events if they need it actually i'm also now an assistant to amy bruni for her event sure. company yeah. also so i'm traveling to a lot of those events but as of this moment i'm not doing any events myself so. and, and that is actually what i meant more of like traveling to the events with yeah. your clients because i mean that does take i mean that's a lot of work it's a lot mm-hmm. of time mm-hmm. yeah there's a i think like three events that i have to go to between now and november 2nd funny like how october is always states. a busy month for this sort of <laughs> thing. yeah right season. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> i yeah. thankfully only have one left um because i filled out a lot of my work now so one left until november and I'm going to just enjoy Halloween at home this year. Give out candy? Yeah, give out candy. No, just watch <laughs> movies. And I don't give out candy. Are you, are, are you going to in, enjoy, though, being at home? How long has it been since you've been home for Halloween? It's been a while. I mean, I haven't done anything for Halloween. I might have been home, but I haven't done anything for it in yeah. many, many years. So yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the time down and pretty much do nothing, to be honest with you. Actually hit Universal Hollywood Horror Nights, and that'll be about it. Yeah, that's the plan. Would you, Mark? Would you go um, to events like then as a fan? I mean, would you just go and be like, I want to, I want to check this out. Maybe like a Paracon or something. Like, I always like these. I I might come back once in a while just as seeing how it goes. Yep, just to see everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe a few years down the road. Yeah. 
Yeah. Enjoyed well, my no travel. Yeah. I'm all right. Absolutely come. Let's get to the nuts and bolts of what it takes to put one of these things on. Because, I mean, we look around us, glitz, glamour, great stuff. How often do you see cons like this fail? And how often do you see them come through and really succeed? And what does it take to do that, to succeed? Um, it takes a budget, uh, first of all. And when we talk to everybody, you know, when they call, we're putting on a convention. That's the first thing we discuss with them because we don't want them to lose. You know, we only want them to put on a convention they can afford to do. We don't want them remortgaging their house. And unfortunately, over the years, a number of them have filed bankruptcy and, you know, gone out of business. Um, we want everybody to keep doing events because naturally if they keep doing them, they're going to keep bringing back talent and keep using people like me and Lindsay to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, however, nobody, no, no, nobody, but not a lot of people listen to that and they think it's going to be great and they kind of get a little starstruck and they end up folding after year one or right before it. Um, we see it all the time. Uh, th- this one, this is our seventh year here at the casino. Um, we've been here since year one. It's been great. It just keeps growing and growing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We work on it year round, so it's not a one day, two day process. It's multiple, multiple phone calls and meetings. And even when I finish up here, I have a end of the con meeting with you know the powers that be about next year, and um, we go from there. And then we just start planning. We'll be talking sure. right up till about January and lock everything in. And wow! So it's so even as soon as this is done, guys, you guys are already working on next year. Well, actually, we started on Thursday working on next year. Really? Yep. So I mean, it, it, it is harder than people would think oh yeah we come in a couple of days early just to start on next year so that's that is a, a big venture for anybody that's pretty incredible Lindsay. with with what you're doing now do you have like any like big goals you want to reach that are just like i this is something i'm really working for towards right now with with the company and everything else not really, actually. Not as of this moment. I'm still fairly new to all this. I just launched my company in March, so I'm kind of just taking everything in right now and just trying to learn and watch and experience and so anything perhaps, I can. So perhaps right launching before. it was one of the goals. <laughs> well, yeah, that was definitely a goal right there. Yeah. But um, but no, I'm just kind of trying to learn as much as I can, especially with Mark and with uh, Grant from both of them. And sure. Before sure. I really start wrapping my head around a lot of things that I would like to see from the company in the future. Mm-hmm. Is there been anything that has surprised you going down this journey? Like, you know, I, I never would have thought that this was going to be an issue or that, that how great something is. Uh, it just, I've, what do you think? Uh, it's been, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be this easy, honestly. It's been pretty... Okay, it Pretty looks cool. really, Lindsay, it looks really hard <laughs> when I outside looking in, okay? And, and I have to apologize that to you and the audience. I accidentally called her Abigail. That's and cool. yes, I will take my lashes on that <laughs> and be human for we'll a do second. That later, yeah. And uh, uh, sorry about that, but it's Lindsay. But and don't, don't worry, it wasn't until episode seven that he actually I said my name you, right. Because, you know, I'm so self absorbed. No one's I, named I don't but worry. nobody is no, named no. Hey You. Just so you know. Well, that, I don't I know why do you that said lot, that. Though. I go, Hey You, because. And I, I respond. Greg, you know, that's my Greg, fault. I respond. We talked about this. The only name that matters in the marquee is my name. It's true. Well, it sounds it rolls off the tongue better. I will give you that. So Don't worry. I'm terrible with names. Uh, Great you with know, faces, lately, but I'm terrible just with been names. A little look behind the scenes, guys. Lately, I've met so many faces this weekend. Yeah. That there's a point where they run together as a radio guy. I'm trying to go, okay, this is this person. That's this person. And so I do yeah. apologize. But getting back no, to the line fine. of questioning, you're, you're in the business. You've been in it a, a while now. You're working hard. You're building a client base. Mm-hmm. Now, Adam and Amy, we just had them. Thursday on After Hours AM. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and I wasn't there for it. So, my good friend and uh, associate and manservant, Eric, he did <laughs> have to do the interview. So, I know he did a great job. Okay. Uh, but you see stuff like that explode. And, and, and the thing with Adam and Amy, we'll use them as a, a perfect example, is they're just genuine people. Mm-hmm. Do you really find are. that the genuine people rise to the top and the ones that are definitely after the fame fall to the bottom? <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that was a tough oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark's <laughs> like, I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> I just looked at Mark like, oh. yeah, that's uh, yeah. It is. I mean, the most genuine people do rise to the top, and the people that take care of their fans will. Um, the ones, and we've all seen it, and heard it that you know they'll be on for one season and don't think they should, you know, travel to meet their fans or yeah, want a ridiculous rate to go meet their fans. You know, they 
they're not around anymore. Yeah. And, you know, they might be, some of them might have a vendor table, um, but they're not speaking, you know. So yeah. 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 And I'm not that's downplaying anybody, but, I mean, that's, let's, I mean, I think we can both agree on this, is mm-hmm. that me and Lindsay, Jason and Grant are the reason that we're all here right now. They started something 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was taboo. And without them, neither of us or any of us would probably be sitting at a Paracon convention with mm-hmm. 2,500 other people this weekend here mm-hmm. in Minnesota. I completely agree. Now, um, Jason and Grant, and, and obviously you you represent Grant, mm-hmm. uh, Lindsay, and great guy. You do a wonderful job. I mean, my gosh, top-notch mm-hmm. job that you're doing. Mark, you, you have a lot in your stable, too. But do, do they ever get overwhelmed being like the founders, the the people that started this whole franchise off. Uh, I mean, do they ever sit back and go? And we're going to talk to them later on, but we'll get this answer from them. But it would have for me, it would have to be overwhelming because one of my good friends is Art Bell, and he started Coast to Coast AM way back in the day, and he was the first guy doing what we're doing. And there was times that he'd just go overwhelmed, like he's like, "Oh my God, it's taken off. It's too big. I I I, I did not realize we're going to touch this many people." Do you ever see that in the business, too, where some of these founding members of the paranormal community that really got out there early going, wow, this is just overwhelming? Grant definitely has those moments. Definitely. Um, I don't I don't know if it's a, in a bad way overwhelming, but it's more the fact he still can't wrap his head around how much he has affected so many people with what he's done. Same for Amy. Same for Adam. I'm sure. Same for Jay. I. Stephen Tango. The yeah, same. Stephen yeah. Tango. All of all of them. Destin, KJ. They're, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we're here, Greg, and, and I'm gonna let you have the microphone next. Don't worry, you will. I'm just joking with them. <laughs> but uh, um, some of these the celebs are like, you're that radio guy that everyone hears. And I'm like, yeah, we are. It's like they're in awe to meet me, and it should be the other way around. And so that's how humble they truly are. Oh, absolutely. You know, when we go to conventions, you know, we'll stay in line to meet other people from The Walking Dead or whatever yeah. show and get pictures, wait for autographs just like everybody else. Oh, that was the cutest thing. Last year at Paracon here, um, we had Michael Cudlitz, and it was the funniest thing with Dave and uh, Steve when they saw Michael come in. And they were like, oh, my gosh, like freaking out, like like just <laughs> – the goofy fans that they would be, it's, it's adorable. They totally get starstruck sure. by others. Sure. That's funny. But I, I know, uh, I'm sure you guys got to get going. Um, you know what I mean? Anything else, Greg? Go, go ahead. You know, the only other thing I was going to ask, like, uh, Lindsay, have you you had a, a strong interest in the paranormal beforehand at all? Like, or is it, what What kind of really got you I was into all of it? I'm... Since I was a baby, I guess you could say, I mean, UFO-wise, aliens, ghosts, all that kind of stuff, it's just been a normal part of my life. Sure. Absolutely normal. So mm-hmm. if there wasn't anything like that in my life, that would be abnormal for me. And <laughs> So that's just... That's great. Yeah. No, oh, that's good. How about you, Mark? Any Anything ever happened to you paranormally that kind of got you interested? Uh, no, but as a teenager, I was I kind of grew up into that stuff. Like I had that whole Time Life series, followed all the... The paranormal people at the time, like Ed and Lorraine Warren, were the first speakers I ever saw when I was 15. I didn't think I'd be out doing this type of stuff, uh, you know, 15, 20 years later. And then to work with people like John Zapp as Ed's, you know, um, nephew, and, you know, it was just phenomenal. So it's kind of like, you know, the best of both worlds. And um, I've seen places around the country I probably never would have seen hadn't I chose this path. Sure. And Lindsay's going to be seeing more of those too. And, you know, it's just, it's been great. I can't say anything bad about it. Well, guys, thank you so much for sitting with us. Of Lindsay course. and Mark. Sure. I mean, really, you guys, like I said, you guys are the engine that drives these things. And, and really, it's great to have you guys on board coming on the radio with us and telling us really the nuts and bolts of things. But really, you know, you guys both are fans as well. I mean, you guys love the people. So, yeah. And that really shines through. Again, guys, thanks so much for coming on After Hours AM. And we'll be talking throughout the day, guys. Thanks we're, for we're having us. Done, I appreciate it. a whole it. lot more coming up. All right, guys. Thank take you. care of each other. Love each other. And talk to you guys later. Thanks.